There we go. We so like the point that we need to get into is not singular. We've got to start off first with talking about upcoming podcasts and shows that are very paramount and important that are going on now. And the first one we're getting into the first will be Antifa Vanguard of Education, which already exists as a channel. It's not released any content yet, but the um the it will be starring Combat Net, the Obnoxious Anarchist and the Angles Hist, and that will be getting into um you know, the, the the important need for anti-fascist movement across the globe. But of course, mainly this is going to be discussing about the necessity of it within the first world narrative of which imperialism is reaching into that fascist and antagonistic mode of, of movement. You've got the Marist rebel gang, which is going to be Jason and Rune Mason, Mason Steiner, Chad Antifa and Comrade Net. And it's going to be a fun, fun little tussle and struggle because what's it? We got a vast variety of different perspectives and opinions there. Some, some, some dissident, some egotistical, some all over the place. But they're all good comrades, and they're all going to squash together, meatheads, discuss all sorts of different stuff. That is going to be all over the board when it comes to having a great bash about and a good conversation from four well-respected comrades. Panther Power. That is a, a show that was very much needed. That we've been, we've actually been discussing quite a lot about today. Um, to do with, uh, we want to bring uh, Stephen Struggle and Dr. Weisfeld together to have some absolute struggle sessions together and bring 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 the uh, old guard into 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 the uh, full position that they need to be in to help support the new upcoming front forward. Actually, actually, this falls in line with the words that Dr. Weisfeld has said. Where we, uh, you know, the 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 wise sort of experience that they've had in the past of what has been needs to sort of be, you know, analyzed, looked at, and passed down to a degree, but it needs to be, you know, what is wrong, proven wrong, what is right, proven right, and seeing what we need to push forward by the young that are coming forward. Like, it's it's a, it's a, a, a bashing out of different ideas and different ideals. And then this comes into, you know, after after the uh, the Panther Power podcast between Stephen Struggle and Dr. Weiss, well, we've got to come into some of that's not to do with the podcast now, but to do with the dire situations that we're in now. Now, Connor Gillis needs much love, and she is one of the people I didn't have, uh, Donna Newman in a struggling condition that she's in right now. You know, she's uh, I got a yeah, heart, heart out to uh, the effort that she's putting onto this, and that we need Elizabeth to read Donna's emails and, and help out and be. You know, around and helping support her with the the, the stress and that uh, she's under of all the shit she's been through over the years. Um, the Falcon General is a badass kid, but she needs to get her head around things a bit and be a little more or less steam thing. But you know, things need to be a, a expressed and explained to her. But she needs to, you know, people need to not be neglecting her. But it also needs to come to a point where she needs to be. She needs to be grounded. She needs to not be uh, flying off the heels too easily, too much. We need to have a, a sensibility about ourselves. Because it's all well and good putting like I, I'm all for education. Need anger in things, and that passion and anger is one thing that she's got. And one thing she should continue to use and express. But we've got to know uh, when and where is too far to go, and when and where is too far to speak, and uh, cold stuff. Okay, that sounds funny coming from me because I'm a bit of a bit of a bit of a mouthy get at fucking all sorts of different avenues and turns. But the um the situation regarding uh Falcon is that, you know, they they're going through that period of time where they're gonna be a little more off the beaten track in the heels of the way in which they express and put themselves out there. But what Falcon does is paramount important. They go for it they they're putting up they're putting a lot of stress on themselves to be trying to get involved in this at a young age so I think more consideration needs to be given to the fact that they are making content about the issues in the world that to be honest given their age and class position they don't actually have to give a fuck so the fact that they're making they might make positions that you don't like or I don't like or might be a bit over as they're less on certain issues or others that shouldn't be a point of contention uh, to a degree where we start attacking uh, you know a, a teenager in the same way that you're going to attack an adult you've got to dissertate in a way that is respectful and understanding and pay respects to the fact that did you give a fuck about this stuff when you were that age and were you in as much of a class position as she is at the same time because you might not have been you might actually be in a lower class position than her and she'd be the first person to tell you before i am because i don't fully understand the ins and outs of it so 
you know, maybe you're not giving enough credit to the fact that she's in a she's probably in, she's probably in a better class position enough that she could go focus on education, go get the degree she wants, and tell you all to go fuck yourselves. So the fact she's going to take the time out of her day to go and do all this, stream all this, make all these points out. That needs to be taken into consideration and given respect. And hello, Duad Sayed. Um, the, um, the, now, getting on to Dr. Weisfeld, this is the, this is the, the really core part of the situation because, so, criticism is David in a lot of ways where sometimes it comes across with a little bit of a blind side to it because there's, there's, there's things that they can see that are problems in people's position, and I've done it myself in regards to this, where uh, in regards to these things, is that you can end up taking the problems, the wrong sides of someone's position, and elevating that towards patterns in other people's position. And what ends up happening is people look at the end point where someone is, and they don't look at the history that they've got. Now, this Dr. Weisfeld is the person who I'm speaking of here, and it's 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 the no one no one seems to be willing to fully wrap their head around the situation of him. They just want to talk about the here and now, and I understand that I can get that I can get the animosity, I can agree with some of the criticisms, but the point is is that we're not going to get there by slandering and ignoring the history behind them and just treating them like you know they're just some academic. And I am one of the first people to jump to criticize the, the, the library aristocracy or anyone who's an academic or anyone who's like that. And I, I, spoke, I spoke with Weisfeld today and I have a lot of respect for him, the, 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 way, the way he dealt with things, the way he dealt with my criticisms of things and handled the conversation and come up with some great points about other stuff. It was, a, it was a very enlightening conversation and he has a lot of charm to him, but not only is it about this, is his um, very respectful way of, of discussion and being able to engage within those conversations, but it was more so the point that I would like to lay out is his history. The one thing that you need to take into account with someone is their background, their upbringing, where they come from. That is very important. The first seven years of your life are one of the most imprinting parts of your life going, is what you know ingrains the sort of principles that you are going to hold for a very long time in your life because once you pass that seven point is when your brain is fully independent you are on your own your baseline is all you've got behind you of where you are reliant on your parents like you're still living with them yes and you still got a reliance on to a degree but once you pass seven you're psychologically developed to a point where your brain is actively working as an independent unit so you are you are as cooperative as any part of this species is but you have reached a point of like um you know, what, you know, they say the sort of starting point where you start to turn into a man, you've begun your path to proper independence, you know, you've started to think more independently, you're not relying on your parents to think for you, you start to get to a point then when you start to develop on, and actually if you see, this comes into one of the problems of the labor aristocracy, the people who are late in the, born in the labor aristocracy, their parents think for them too much longer and they end up not developing a greater sense of independent thought for themselves, for a longer period of time and it pervulsifies themselves into a very concerning way of thinking very childish one as well but the um what's it the uh, the thing to point out with with uh, dr weisfeld is he comes from a family that that, that were persecuted and, and massacred you know uh, during the holocaust his mother was a survivor of uh, you know suffering in a camp and you know as he uh, i will say the words that he said to him uh, probably not well enough exactly because I'm not the best at repeating things so I do hope I don't do him any injustice but the you know his mom he asked he asked her he interviewed her after the war and he asked like did he have any properties or anything like that that would have been you know be stolen or taken or that could be came back as you know Jewish people that that you know because it was all you know the, the, about the bank owning Jews that were stolen you know all that box you know he asked them about this um the the they, what they said is no, they owned nothing. Not only did she own nothing, none of her, none of her many brothers, there was ten, ten, ten siblings altogether, owned nothing. None of them owned nothing. They were basically dumped on the proletariat, jumping through from job to job to scrap to scrap to survive. And they were fucking genocided like, like, like animals. And they were, they were, they were, they were put, put into camps, worked work to death camps, and lucky to have survived. The, um, and, and, you know, that, that's an, that's a, already an instant imprint on you. Your mother, was a fucking a, 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 and, and your auntie in 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 you know your, your your family have been in death camps that's 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 already a start to your life that is a massive imprint and then you go through he didn't start off an academic he 
he moved and pushed himself to get into that position as a part of elevating his voice for his movement when he was living in Canada. So that's, that's something that he's pushed for. And he's been all over the place. He's been a part of the anti-apartheid movement, not just for not just for Israel, but for South, uh, South, America, uh, South Africa as well. I always do that accidentally. South Africa. Um, he, he has been struggling uh, along with the civil rights movement. He's been struggling with this. And, you know, he's got a lot of support for them. Actually, no, he wasn't. He wasn't in America, but he was supportive of the movement. So, um, you know, he's a panther. He's a panther, right? That's what. I, that's the point I'm getting to. He's a supporter of the Panther Code, and he's in line with that. Now, he has got a lot of things that he says that offends people. He struggles to deal with black people, uh, on a certain degree, because of some of the old ways of language that he might use, and that's not his fault. He has no. There's nothing. He's not a racist, Dr. Weisfeld isn't. He is absolutely against racism. He's absolutely against colonialism. That is a, there's a complete mischaracterization of Weisfeld. And anyone trying to spill that out is just as stupid as the people that are trying to call him a fascist. I'm sorry. I hate to use the word stupid. I don't like calling people that, but that is a ridiculous idea. I have fucking no, no support in that. Dr. Weisfeld made some bad, bad positions at time. Like, he, like there was the one time he made the bad position about Libya because of, uh, you know, Gaddafi's idiotic idea of calling himself the King of Kings. And that was an understandable thing to get confused on. But as he said as well, it was idiotic of him to ignore the fact that NATO was a present force in this action that was going on there and that the, the rebel forces were agents of, of British and American imperialism. So the point, the point to be angled there is that, you know, to, 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 to look at him either as a rigid black or as a racist goes to throw away his support for Libya up until the point where Gabby Fede Gaddafi went rogue and everything went wrong there. And to ignore the fact that Dr. Weisfeld has more than apologized for being wrong before in the past. And you've got to understand when someone reaches his point of age and has gone through the things he's reached and reaches the point he's reached to in life where he is an academic. Yeah, he is going to make wrong points. Yeah, he might be stubborn about them, but that's because you're not going to you're not going to get to an elder by just yamming at his points. That's not how you get to an elder. You've got to show a level of respect for your elders, and this doesn't mean not saying the things that are going to criticize that are going to be hard to handle. No, they're quite the opposite. I was even speaking to him about today. It's about saying them things, but showing the respect for them, their positions, the logic they've come to, and the experiences they've been through in life. Otherwise, you are just going to hit brick fucking walls with people who as far as they're concerned are being touted to by people who have not as much experience as them and if you think most of his experience in life is just being an academic you're wrong his experience in life is being a supporter of, of freedom of other people and of 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 of, of uh you know so he's been a supporter of movement for socialism has he made bad positions across the line plenty of them have we all yes my positions have not been fucking good for most of my life i've been here there and everywhere i've been a nazi in my past but you know what i don't think he's ever been that fucking bad i don't think he's ever fucking thrown my way down that end. he's been you know brought up and scarred with the past history of 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 of, of you know the the holocaust he's grown up for the cold war and supported the movements of, of all these anti-positions and all that the, 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 the issues that he's going to have now, the best way we're going to deal with them is discourse, engaging with him, and respecting the fact of what he's been through, what he's, what he's, um, uh, what he's been through, the culture that comes with age, and the fact that we need an application of cadres where we respect the wiseness of the old and the new ideas of the young and then bring them together. There's got to be synthesis. We can't be turn it around and being like, okay, well, there are these now modern issues of, of Dr. Weisfeld that completely go against this long history that he has got of being an absolute venerated, true comrade. Someone I would happily call a comrade. And we're just going to throw that all the way because of problems that come now. I don't think that's a good idea. Like, I, and I, Do you know what? The thing I'd like to point out is I have all the sympathies out there to my anarchist comrades that are putting out these positions. I understand. And uh, Dr. Weisfeld and everyone else should listen to the Lumpen and listen what they have to say. But they should take into this consideration that not everything said there is 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 um, and well, nothing said there is is exactly false, but nothing there is. There are things there that aren't exactly true either, because there are speculations and accusations made that just can't be true and shouldn't be made in a way where they're saying I know or that they're, they're justified. But I have all respect to my anarchist comrades and what they're going through. They're they're in a massive struggle, and I can understand why they're pissed off at the moment. But the we need an engagement of discord. These people 
have, have uh, you know, uh, these anarchists are not just anarchists, they're not just some people, because I know what the internet's like, when you think of anarchists, you think of these dickheads online, like, like, the only anarchists that are online that aren't dickheads are the ones that are coming from the lump and speak it out on the internet to get their positions heard, but the anarchists aren't all about straddle on the internet, they have abilities to use it, they could be watching it right now, for all I fucking know, but the point is, is the anarchists are on the street, they're out there, they're more hardcore than any of us, they're the ones that are actually fighting out there, and if you've got a problem with anarchists, you either don't know who they are or you're seriously fucking backwards because the people who are and, and actually backwards, not this fucking colonial term you guys like to use and call anyone out in the third world that doesn't fit your fucking liberal fucking priorities. No, actually backwards, first worldist. You're fucking, you, you, you're absolutely ignorant of what the anarchists are doing for the Lumpen people and that is shows your complete backwardsness. And that is something that Dr. Weisfeld can see that's, uh, uh, not, even though he doesn't agree with the, the anarchists, we've been speaking about this not so long ago, and you know, he can see where, you know, he he even made, so you know, he can see where he needs to make concessions to his position and come towards ours, and we see where we, uh, I, 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 I certainly do see in certain points where we can come towards him and make certain concessions and bring things in and that's how we level things in and bring discourse with good, long revolutionaries but it comes into this we can't be disregarded our anarchist comrades they are absolute fucking legends and heavens and, and they're losing brothers and sisters as we speak night and day because of a war that certain fucking supposed Marxists want to say isn't happening in Arizona right now and that is ridiculous Anyone that thinks there isn't a war in America, that war, America has been at peace all this time and all these things, because, you know, yes, no, America does war around in other countries, and this is not comparing exactly to that. This is different. No, this this isn't compared to America warring around in nations. No, what is happening in places like Arizona and places like that is comparable to, and, and not not to the same level, but comparable to the same type of relationship to a degree. It's the, the sort of, you know, it's a microcosm of it. Of the things you get into colonized nations, it's it's a fourth world struggle, and that is to run into things like Palestine and uh, South Africa, and uh, uh, what's it, Mexico, and other places like that. You've got the the, the these struggles are are, are um, you know these struggles are, are coming in and coming in hot, and they happen all across America. This isn't just an Arizona thing. Arizona is a very special place to look at because not because it's different not calling it a special case per se but it's a special place to look at in the degree that it really shows how elevated struggles can be because if everyone thinks texas is bad you need to fucking take a bite of arizona because it will shock you out of your nipples and you all won't think of the texans as pussy holes and you go step in arizona and that is what i've fucking gotten from experience in my arizona comrades from seeing videos last year of fucking the police fucking moving bodies about seeing fucking a comrade disappear for a while because we thought I mean, at the point where we thought they were dead like like actual severe shit going on down there that worried the fuck out of me worried the fuck out of jason worried the fuck out of net for certain because he's out in the fucking deep in this shit pulling this fucking weight and no one gives respect to after that well no the people are but the people that do are in the fucking small not in the fucking big but it, uh, yeah, exactly. We we do we do need to support them in their real work, and we need to learn from each other as, as, as well. In that, like, they want to learn from us. That's the one thing. That's one of the st the most beautiful thing that their Maoist comrades had said is that they want to learn from us, so we should learn from them. They are intelligent enough that they want to learn from everyone and anyone, and that is the exact same thing that we should be. Because if we're not doing that, then as far as I'm concerned, they're a million times more smarter than we are. And I don't think smartness is a good measure of anything, but if we're to actually boil it down to that, if we're to go for like the really first world measure of intelligence and all that, as far as I'm concerned, the malice, uh, sorry, the anarchists, the anarchists are the most intelligent movement at the moment going on there. Now, the actual most intelligent like build up movement I've ever thought was happened in the first world is the Panther movement. And do you know what? I reckon the anarchists would probably agree with me because they're more, they, they, they are more in line with the Panthers than any one of you Marxists are at the moment. And that's one of the things that needs to be taken in consideration. And uh, whether they hate me saying that or not, they can fucking fly over to England and punch me. I'd pay, for, if I had the money, I'd pay for the kick. I don't have the money to do that. But you, know, you can fucking uh, find a way to smack me for it. But I, I have a full respect to them for that, like, regardless of what they want to say, they have they have a principal code that is absolutely right on, and regardless of what they want to do, like, um, you know, well, it's not really a regardless, because, I, 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 you know, what they're doing is what I mean, is, you know, regardless of anything, they, I, I've got all, all my heart in there for them, and everyone else needs to. You know, um, 
it uh it occurs to me that um we we, we might have to explain that um jason is now in a position where you know we're, we're kind of letting the mask off the veil that we have our own veil but it was nothing secret or like you know it wasn't like a cabal thing it's just it was under wraps and the uh the federated mlm cadres they have their representatives like Engelsist is actually representing them but he's not the only representative mm -hmm. he's just the first one and like they're getting their messages out and i noticed that that's where a lot of the uh people are getting upset because jason is tying this to palestine lately and as he should because they're the palestinian factor is being informed with the navajo and the lakota you know um indigenous mexican um now, one of the th interesting things is like it, it is getting more open where people are making this distinction, for instance, between Black Lives Matter, the weird organization, and the mass line that existed in 2020 and technically isn't line because the idea of like Black Lives Matter is that Black Lives Matter too. That's the point. It's not that other lives don't matter. And, and that's the thing is there needs to be a, the recognition of who's under repression. One thing I will say in Dr. Weisfeld's defense is that he didn't know that it was panther code and all these black Maoist cadres that were actually opening the doors for us and when he did figure that out he didn't understand that a lot of times there was a language barrier between them and then there was a language barrier to the anarchists and i think that that's why the anarchists have gotten like more open than the angry because he says he's with them and they're trying to say that you know they don't feel like they're being understood by him but we're kind of in the position where we have to explain to the anarchists you're misunderstanding what he's saying you know what I mean? If, if you could elaborate on this stuff, that's... Well, I mean, it's... I come into it on this, so... Um, it's not so much about the misunderstanding. It, it, it comes into that a bit. There's a miscommunication on, on, a, on a lot of ends, and more so that there's a lack of communication. So these things are so broken up like this. There's not going to be a solid communication like this. There needs to be more dialogue. And I think the problems that we've had going on that have happened recently that I won't go into too much detail of when, with everything that's gone on in the Bund and the fact that things have, have, have gone the rocky road that it has, that is, um, you know, that, 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 that gives an open door for things to actually have more contact because what was going on before was limiting Dr. Weisfeld's ability to even speak with these anarchists, to speak with Pat Dakota, to speak with the people like this. Because of because of issues with with certain with certain chauvinism and other stuff like that and, and, and mental health problems and, and a lot of there's been a, there's been a diatribe of issues but you've got we've got you 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 and you and uh, uh, Dr. Weisfeld are, are still pushing it in the game and you're both very dedicated to, to you know still still being socialists so I mean Bundes to be specifically but the um, you know the Bund is in a it's in a dying state at the moment and it's a really struggling position so it's coming into that where now that the door is open and now that we've got sort of the 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 um some form of at least rotate rotation happening to the the the, the cogs in which the button is it was was directed on we can at least sort of try and get dr weisfeld more contact with these anarchists and maybe build things up that way because i think if there's more contact we can get past the language barrier because the language barrier is always going to exist between the young and the old that is just that's just fact. Yeah, yeah, and um, uh, and the academic and the lumpen. Uh, if to elaborate further on Don and Newman, um, like, cause like you see where I'm coming from. Like, can you explain why we would like uh, uh Connor Gillis or Ivashua to be the one to um probably work with Don and Newman at this point? Um, I've been trying to get somebody to reach out to Donna Newman for a while, and like I, I did, like Donna Newman has taken a turn of things I disagree with, but I noticed that it, 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 it it's similar to Connor Gillis's take. I mean, it's very obvious that what's I, I mean, everyone's been in a crisis since bloody nineteen eighteen. It's been a fun time since then. But anyway, it, when it comes to this, the um, it comes into a many many asset of things, you know. Donna, Donna Donna Newman has gone through a lot of things in her life. Like she's put a lot of work into the the movement as a whole for 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 for, for this, and um, you know, this comes into uh, espionage work that she's done that has been very serious. That is, you know, decades of work, and then she's got the uh, you've got the um, what's it? You have. The, sh the fact that was it was it two strokes she went for I think it was, so you wait, know she's been. Wait, ask that question again. What do you mean? Was it two strokes that she went through? Yes, 
Yes. Yeah, so two strokes as well. And I, you know, I lost two grandparents to a stroke. So, you know, it, it's not an easy thing to survive, not an easy thing to go for, not an easy thing to keep yourself straight edged. And when you combine all those years of stuff, you're likely going to suffer with issues like PTSD and uh, be, uh, bipolar disorder. I have bipolar myself, manic depression, I prefer to call it. I think it's a better word, but anyway. The, um, my bipolar is, uh, you know, big, 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 big difficulty when you've got also the stresses of having two strokes. Because when you have problems with your brain, I've, when I've had skull injuries myself, you get high pressure on your skull and you can get really bad headaches and really bad pressure. It's really hard to think and focus. Combine that with PTSD issues and bi bi bipolar, which causes a, a, an innate jealousy, a, um, a, a flippative nature between manic action of aggression towards people whilst flipping back the depressive apologetics, which you can see in the dissertation that has been recently made. If you look at the different points that have been screenshotted done as it flips between her corrections in the small right in other being absolutely depressively apologetic and her rancid sort of manic explosive capital typed dissertation that happened before. Like there's certainly a lot of difficulties that she's facing and dealing with and I do not want to insult her of anything I say here and I, I don't mean this, I don't mean anything I've said here and any disrespect to Donna. I've got a lot of respect for the things that she has done in the past, but she's also done a lot of disrespectful things that do need denouncing that have been horrible, especially what she's done to Net and it's not on. But it, what we need to see is that come uh, you know, Donna Newman has not always been an a, 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 a well, sorry to use a disrespectful word, but a shithead. So we need to you know, and to be honest, she used more disrespectful slander for herself when she wrote a dissertation of herself. Well, after she corrected herself when she was slandering herself after and turned it. She she did the, one of the things that we really didn't like is that she turned on all of her positions when at the end, like she flipped and she blamed herself and blamed everything and tried to say that she was just wrong. And no, because a lot of the a lot of positions that she has come up with has been good ideas. She needs to not just throw all her positions away because she made stupid mistakes. She needs to reignite a part of herself that was engaged in the boom, but that needs to not come at an expense of her health. So Connor Geddes can hopefully be the, and I, I think Donna, Donna herself trusts her more than anyone to be to, in this regard, at least from what Net has advertised Connor Geddes to Donna for. I, I don't know. I don't know Donna to be able to speak on her behalf on that, but at least we trust Connor Geddes to be one person who can speak to um speak to uh what's it speak with and handle all the daughter's emails and try and take some away of daughter and try and get her into a better state of mind so that she can be more relaxed and get her get essentially get her away from the fire for a bit because donna needs to get her health together more importantly than anything because if her health's together you never know her mind might come straight back to the work of being involved with the movement but um what's it she's she's um she 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 uh She's fell from grace, and that's something that's heartbreaking to see. But we can't just throw her off board. She's not, she's not in the right state to just be throwing her away like that. That's a dis, that's, that's disrespectful, and that's not what you do with someone who's been involved in an organization that is almost family-like with the way it builds itself together and respects each other on a very, very, very deep level. And that's why that's why Donna Newman herself is so disgusted with herself and what she did. I don't know. I, I, what's it? I hope that I hope that it is true, and that I'm I, I'm not I'm not spiking myself in the ass, but I hope that she pushes herself forward. Now, I what's it? She um. I I can explain this. Donna Newman has a mad uh, anxiety disorder about uh, a lot of this. Uh, she used to have a channel known as uh, this is back when she was one of the day one subscribers of Jason Unruh back in two thousand nine. She had this uh, YouTube channel called Doi Kite Warrior Princess. Now, doikite is a Yiddish word which refers to hereness, which is part of Bundist philosophy, the idea of wherever we, are, wherever we live, that is our homeland. So Donna Newman oh. uh, had the channel Doikite Warrior Princess. She actually used to speak uh, Yiddish poetry. I loved this, even if it was cheesy, because it helped me get better at Yiddish, which we need Yiddish for political reasons, right? She later deleted this channel, and then I had criticized her. And this was this is not something that's very well recorded, nor should it be, but she was so frustrated that I would definitely want her to keep that but yeah but that if we're trying to preserve Yidd the yiddish uh, language of culture uh you should even if you don't like your project you shouldn't like hell how this let, let us keep the videos and we can have other people make better videos if you're so worried about it but she she's been mocked for her voice and she's been consistently attacked particularly by trotsky's for having that jersey accent oh come on like 
like that's a low blow stereotype, man. Like next thing you know, you might as well just be calling her a banker. Like fuck off. Like, like oh wow, so he's got a Jersey hey, accent. Well, like the journalists uh, fucking made fun of Neo Jacobin for his accent. You know. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, it, 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 people people need to grow up though, like, cause the, this is like such a such a low blow stereotype. Like, ha ha, wow, yeah, New Jersey, New Jersey, uh, female Jewish accent, ha ha ha, funny. Like, okay, c grow up. Like, th th these people need to grow up. Like, that's disrespectful. It's disrespectful to who she is, and you know, that is a thing that a lot of people have con in con insecurities about because to think anyone likes to have to have an American accent. Let's be real now. I think anyone likes to have to sound like Americans. Like, no one chose to sound like an American. No, no, I'm just gonna hear it, hear it, hear it. So before well, you yank it, do the dick. I think the Jersey accent scare people, people because if you watch, I don't know if you ever saw Friends, but there's a Janet, you know, Chandler's girlfriend on and off curling, and she's like Chandler being ha, uh, and then you have a uh, like. Uh, I mean, yeah, no, I'm not. Fan. Yeah, I don't know if you ever watched Janet. No, no, I mean, like, I mean, no disrespect, but I mean, New Jersey is the George Geordie accent of America, but that's like that's just what comes of it, you know. I don't shit on every Geordie I come across. I'll shit no, on no, a shit no, I'm, not, I'm not saying that, but I, I think certain people are for some reason have an irrational fear about Jewish Jersey accents. Well, I, I think I don't. I, maybe because they've watched well, it, they've they saw too much South Park. Well, I mean, I don't know. Like there, there, there are things that we're told are are, are dis disagreeable, or and, and we don't know we're told them because we're kind of like subliminally told this shit passively I mean, through pop culture. I mean, what's it? The um, but the thing is, is it 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 it, it just comes into another one of those sort of like uh, sus things where maybe they're not being offensive to the point where they're being 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 anti-Semitic, but it just sounds it just rings that tone to me because it's like. It just seems like such a lowball joke, like, haha, we're gonna do the whole stereotypical, she's a Jersey Jew, she sounds like a Jersey Jew, ha ha ha, like, that's what it sounds like to me, it, like, I'm not trying to impose on anyone or anyone like that, it just seems very petty, like, what people have to boil down to that, and you're probably, you're probably right, they're probably afraid of it, do you know why they're probably afraid of it, because they know that people that are in these certain positions, whether they're Jewish or black or, or Asian or, or, or indigenous especially, they're probably going to be a bit more radical than them, and they're probably going to smack around the edges. They get cheeky. No, but but it's just petty. Like what that shows to me is that they cannot prove her wrong on her arguments. There, like if you've got a problem with her, prove her wrong on her arguments. Don't take the piss out of a fucking accent. That's pathetic. You got to take the piss. And do you know what? The funny thing is, is they're probably Americans. No American can take the piss out of someone's accent. Cause that's the point I'm getting to. When you say it like this. You can't take the piss out of someone's exit. No, shut the fuck up, Yankee Doodle dickheads. Like, all of you from East Coast to West Coast have a problem with your accent. Let's just get that down. The only the only Americans that have a good accent are the Irish Americans. They sound sick. The rest of you, though, you sound funky as hell. Or you sound like Canadians. Sorry to break it to you. <laughs> well, we were talking about Canada with Jason, about how it must suck to be Canadian because you have a banana shoved up your throat called the american uh, uh banana and you have a throat shoved up your donkey let's just say uh called uh, uh um england so yeah like they they, they want to call themselves americans and be more close to the americans but they want to be like they're like oh yes but we have the sensibilities of being british and it's funny it's like so pathetic like come on canada you could you could try you could try harder <laughs> Oh, everybody's so like warm to everybody. I like it. This is a good stream where everybody's not like fighting each other, like in Trav's stream where he doesn't know why people are talking shit in his stream to each other and to him. I gotta talk to leftism today. Uh, I, I had a good conversation with him before. I need to have another one with him, but I've just been busy. Okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah fuck my brain on the U.S. at the same yes. time. That's Canada. Yes. Oh, I'm yes. Gaddafi. I mean, not, not, not saying he was a form of him, I'm saying he got uh, literally fucked by a machete by someone who was funded by both Britain and, the um, and, and America. So if people want to know Dr. Weisfeld's credentials, you know, with all their proud Marxism-Leninism, uh, Dr. Weisfeld knew the actual Stokely Carmichael, otherwise known as Tuame Ray. He, he knew, personally did know Yasser Arafat. He did know... Gaddafi, like he knew these people. He was yeah. in the non-alignment movement. I mean, this is the thing. So, like, another point to point out there as well with Gaddafi is that, you know, that, that, uh, Dr. Weisfeld was very much in it to, um, you know, sort of uh, 
he wanted to work alongside and be, be, a, be close to Gaddafi. And Gaddafi went and made the statement, you know, there was a statement about being the, uh, the king of kings, and then there was him choosing not to see with uh, Dr. Weisfeld and went to go see with a neo fascist organization hiding themselves as fucking leftists. Yeah, and you, you mentioned how this gets back into how Nassar was tricked to hating all the communists because. He thought because he had a different view from the communism and it, that his socialism was different, the communists would go after him. Yeah, so, no, so here's the thing. It's it's not even, it's, it's even deeper than that. So what, what happened was uh, Nasser was tricked by a uh, right-hand man of his who he thought was a trusted friend. Sadat is his name. who ended up being the leader of Egypt, if a lot of people might remember, during the war with Gaddafi, where, bless him, the DPRK were very smart and they, they, they saw what happened and they went and supported Gaddafi in that war, because Gaddafi was the right one in that war. This was before Gaddafi was a shithead, back when he was a good good guy. But, um, and I mean, even still in the war that he was in, he was still like the fucking, at least the lesser of two evils, and that, that's the good guy. I mean, yeah, so, um, but anyway, um, in this war, he was the good guy. He was, he was, he was helping to you know, deal with Sadat, who was an agent of the US. And here's the point. Sadat was tricking NASA that the Soviet Union was their enemy, that they were gonna they were gonna eventually assassinate NASA or remove NASA, they do not know agree with anything he's doing, and that he needs to go and support the USA because the USA will defend him and they'll be fine. Like he was trying to drop NASA's guard down to the US constantly and it was Sadat that betrayed that NASA turned on him and ended up seizing power from them and fucking what's when uh, you know um that was that was with the help of Israel and the US and it, it completely crushed the the Ba'athist movement, like 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 the Arab Socialist Republics was 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 dying at that point. Without Nasser there, it was not going to ever survive. He was he was he was you know it was paramount to it. He was the, Egypt was the country taking it most seriously to the point of which you had the other countries trying to complain at Egypt for the fucking what's it, the um um. Uh, it was, uh, you know, the, the, I think it was Syria or Iraq was trying to have a go at Egypt for like basically running the entire show, and it was Egypt was basically pawns pushing forward the most for it. Baathism flexed into different ways, and in Syria it started to move away from socialism and more to social democracy. In 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 Egypt, it got disintegrated by Sadat taking over and destroying Nasser's movement, and in Iraq. Saddam Hussein used it for his own movement and started using chauvinistic Islamic. Um, idealism to push people into his aim and even a lot of people you know, but probably most of the people in Iraq saw for I wouldn't doubt that but the people of Iraq were more than happy to support him because even though I'll, I'll, I'll give this to Saddam and I'll give this respect, respect to, to Saddam is that even though he was a shithead and he did a lot of things and failed the uh, Ba'athist movement definitely he did still make a solid Iraq for, for and, 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 and supported them people to a degree like he did a lot of shared stuff in his own country and outside his own country but the country was much safer then than it was after the US when they fucking blasted it to fucking smithereens and all these given respect to that we've got to understand this is that we can't just turn around and be picky and choosy just because this that, and the other like shitheads are going to get in power in the third world but that's not entirely our dictation to make sometimes it's looking at who they're willing to fucking deal with and supporting them if they struggle against it but we can't turn around and be like okay this guy's got to go this guy's got to go we're going to move here move that another because like a good motion to put would be Gaddafi's movement for the Ba'athist movement and Gaddafi wasn't a Ba'athist but he went against Sadat when Sadat took over fucking Egypt and he, he fought against him no no Gaddafi Gaddafi if Gaddafi had ground himself in Ba'athism and didn't go around his weird idealistic path that ended up screwing him into thinking he was a king of kings, regardless of whether that was supposed to be literal or just a phrasic term, regardless of what the fuck he says, he was a spiritual leader to people, and they fucking took that to heart. He, if he had followed Baathism and dethroned himself from his fucking pedestal of bollocks, he would have fucking solidified the movement and been able to have carried the torch if Nasser had died or not. But he had completely fucked himself backwards. Your shit. Indeed. So. Just answering Falcon. Okay. Oh yeah. Um. <laughs> hold on. I, I'm I uh. Making sure my my stuff actually works, which I don't know if it's actually working. Hold on. Let me check something. I'm having a technical difficulties, comrades. Hold on. It won't. It will be momentary. Don't worry. I fix. Okay. I've got. It. Okay. So. 
we've mostly covered everything, but I would encourage those who have just joined to watch the whole thing. Complicated. I, I tend to agree with this, but the problem is Bothism is actually in three different divisions. That's the problem with it. That's why, although I, I, I do on the one hand agree with Comrade number three, that's technically fascist. I also technically disagree because it depends which Bothism we're talking about. There's social democratic nationalist Bothism, there's actual socialist Bothism, and then there's Nazism. fascist Bothism. Unfortunately, Nazism spawned both the socialist one and the fucking the, the, the Nazi one, which decided to confuse everything up. Nasser was the socialist one himself, but like, a, what, 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 you know, what spawned you from Nasser? I definitely believe this. I contest this. I actually do contest this. But in this, in, 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 in I think, I think, I, I, I actually think that if Nasser's Nasser's movement had gone forward and built the Pan Arab movement they wanted to, they would have got a socialist society out of it. I genuinely believe that. I did not hear about this. And I, socialism was always a language used by Nasser. Always somebody he talked about. He always Dr. mentioned Weiss the word Paul socialism. Would, would smile seeing shit like this. <laughs> See, you know, that's the thing I've told him before. It's like, you really want some solidarity. Stop talking to the Trotskists and talk to the Maoists. They got you. They, they, they agree with you on a lot of things. He's figuring that out. Like he found out that the Engelsis really does want to know what he has to say, and say this is, this is, this is part of what I think is going on. There's not the the shock about the terrible past. There's the shock that tankies are the ones that have his back, and he's having a hard time with that. You know, it, like if you could elaborate on that, because you're helping me explain to people. Because I don't think I'm enough anymore to explain this stuff to people. So I'm letting you go. Also, because I'm, I'm also going to have to step out for a cigarette and let you continue. Falcone should see the beginning. Make sure that Connor Gill sees this. Uh, Stone Soviet wanted to give his love to the broader family because you know he's 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 he he, he he's a brother who keep, can't stop getting high. And I'm a I got high with him today. Gotta 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 always keep getting high. It's a less way Don't to deal do with drugs, this fucking kids. Picture. Get high on life. God, I sound like one of them fucking training videos in America. Are, are you here? The high school students, are you doing drugs? Well, you better not be doing drugs because you got high school exams I going on. So you better get high and lie in and the focus on them exams. The greatest force in the Middle East is the Islamic Republic of Iran, superior to all communist regimes. Amen. All right. I this, had to do that. No, see, this, this is why I said, is sponsored let, let by Raytheon. Know. This is. This is where you can basically voice your, 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 your concern you had with Falcone, but I did want to say in Falcone's defense, I like the way Falcone trolls because it means I control her back. She'd be like, long live Gonzalo. I'm like, long live Gaddafi. It's 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 fun. It works. It it, it, it clears the air. You know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe, but... um. No, no, does knowing what you mean mean I agree with you? Because ha. <laughs> Yeah, see, this is one of the things why why Connor Gills can vouch and say Falcone is actually not a Gonzalez because Fal because Connor did, was a Maoist, but she did almost get, it was the it was the Gonzalez that actually turned Falcone off. I have I have, I have, I have, I have no respect for that. It's it's Gonzo, like he's a Gonzo as far as I'm concerned. So he's Gonzo. I do believe that we should. Idiot. I appreciate it. Gaddafi was complicated. He came I don't have an opinion on Gaddafi. Yeah, you do, Falco. Don't lie. Falcone, <laughs> I'll let you know this. Jaha Maria is the end game. Is the is 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 the end game that when that whenever Demarcus of any sort, whether it's Bundist, <laughs> whether it's Democratic Socialist, or whatever, we all conclude that Gaddafi was super no, fucking based. Not. That Gaddafi's idea of the Jaha Maria exactly, is very yeah, close yeah. to what we believe the end game is. It's Jaha Maria, not communism. You know, uh, what's it? Gonzalo is not based. Oh, no. I would, I would, I would, I would stop asking Maoists that think he's based, and maybe start asking indigenous peasants that don't think he's based. Maybe ask the people that are fucking what's it? Experienced people that were executed. Uh, you know, yeah, the, the 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 simple fucking bits and pieces. Or should we just go and execute the public because they don't agree with us? Because that means we should just go start killing people now. I think the I thing, thing that we all that's ridiculous. For is if you remember in the early days, but people were talking crap to Falcone because she was trying to stick up for the lump and proletariat and the black nationalists. Which yes, is because people like to fucking pick on their easiest target, and they're like, oh wow, someone who isn't a forty-year-old man, I'll go pick on this person instead. It's like, okay, you've gone straight for the. The teenager that's starting out and trying to get their words out and saying truthful and good stuff, 
saying great stuff. Oh, okay, you're funny, you are. You're funny, okay, fucking, okay, funny. Like I funny. said, she's like this adorable fox, but that, but, uh, funny. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a but we need to explain to Dr. Weisfeld what happened to MRM Youth. Jason is, is really pissed about this. And okay, you know, well, do you know what? Do you know what? I think we should talk about it on here, you know. I think that's actually just the thing. We should just whack the hammer down. Because, you know what? Like, at the end of the day, what's it? Pedophilia is a massive problem today. Not just yes. not just amongst this organization, across the board. Not anyone wanting to be a fucking pedophile and get involved in this group can fuck right off and they will be dealt with accordingly. And that's not a fucking thing that we tolerate here at all. Pedophilia is a fucking, absolutely atrocious, disgusting, inhumane fucking thing. And will not be. It's not acceptable. And, it's and, and, disgusting and, enough to unite uh, the v, the VA and the Navajo the Nation. The thing is, in, in, uh, but this comes into another thing as well. We can't just expect people because we've said that. Okay, like, like all the pedophiles are going to be like, yeah, we're honest and good people. We're not going to get involved with that because they're not. And it's not that they're, it's not that there's some innate badness to them because that's not someone that's come to them. It's still mental health problems and psychological problems have brought them like that. But we've got to deal with the issue, and we can't. We're not solving pedophilia tomorrow, are we? So that's not how we're going to be able to solve this. So how are we going to deal with this? Well, we can't be, you know, and a lot of us are very busy, so it needs to be more people helping and getting involved, especially even people that aren't even involved in the network. I'm not just preaching to people that are involved in the network. Anyone and everyone who knows, or any of us, especially Falcone, needs to not neglect Falcone so much and get involved with them because the, um, what's it? Uh, you, 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 the fact that, so many people not willing to be involved with Falcon or neglect them so much. It allows it to be easily opened up to these pedos and pedos and manipulative people. They're not going to tell you that there's some forty-year-old bloke that's trying I'm to manipulate. Go they're going to act like they're your age. Right, your, your age. I suspect I, I, I'm going to make sure Doctor Weisfeld sees the stream. Please tell Doctor Weisfeld about MRM Youth because what is it? What's special to be about Falcone is Falcone does talk to my daughter, who is largely socially alienated, and as she's one year younger than than Falcone. But I'm gonna, I mean, I'm gonna go have a cigarette. And you like this is this is going to be a document for Doctor Weisfeld to examine. So, and you should mute yourself. Yeah, you go. Okay, so um, so the MRN youth is a, a, a just to get sort of a ground basis going. And uh, if my explanation is poor, Jason had a video on this um, when it first started a few months back. I cannot remember the date for the life of me, but what's it? Fucking 50 50 chance for Colonel end up dropping the link in the bloody chat somewhere anyway. I don't know. But the um, Ma Ma Jason come up with the wicked idea that I wasn't even smart enough to think of myself, to be honest. I was actually a bit, um, you know, because of me having my own little sister and stuff like that, I was really overprotective and tried to basically push aside and, and get a, away from the situation because I expected sort of these dangers. And this is the problem that's come is these dangers have still been an issue. My my worries have been realized not because she went on because that was a good thing that happened. Jason and Bill, not the MRN youth, and having a program that allows them to say things is built on a good thing. And that was never my worst fear. What my worst fears are is that things like pedos and other things like that will try and um, get, caught, get involved and go into situations like this. But the... Um, no, not this documentary has not been monetized, Falcon. The actual MRN youth announcement video that he did. But the anyway. Um I uh But anyway, um the you know, I was more so at the protective sort of side of things and tried to push away and, and get out of the side of things just to avoid these problems. But it, you know, Jason Went on the pro program, set up the MRN youth, and the MRN youth basically gives an open angle for people who are, you know, of sort of like teenager, you know, you're in your high school, you're in college, teenager people to get involved in, and in, 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 if they're getting political, express their politics, especially considering there are a lot of teenage people. As um, uh, a, a video uh, towards the end of June, 26th of June ish, from um, the, the Comrade Gillis that was put on Jason's channel by Jason gets into is that there are kids dying all over the place. A lot of the people that died in Arizona are only fucking 14, 15 year olds a lot of the time. Some of them sometimes 16, 17. Like these are people who are kids that are dying essentially. Like if you want to look at it like that. Like as far as like, you know, the young, young adults in my eyes because I grow up in that sort of like lower class background where you know you grow up quicker. But but to put this into the way the aristocrats are going to see their kids. They're not they're young, they're, they're quite a fucking 70 years of their life ahead of them. You want to put it into really big perspective. And they're dying out there. So, I mean, from, from all sorts of ages, MRN youth is very important, but from Falcon as well, from being someone who's, and 
but uh, you know she's in the upper class. She'd say that fucking need quicker than I would, and she's coming out of the. You know, she could just completely ignore all of this. She could turn around and say, "Fuck you all. I'm just going to do my exams. I'm going to do my things. I'm going to get my qualifications. I'm going to just live a cushy life. I'm going to tell you all to go fuck yourself." And so she's coming out and put her positions. Her positions might be wrong. I mean, you've already seen me clash a bit with them, and I, there, there are wrong positions with every one of us. I've got wrong positions. Ned's got wrong positions. Biasfeld's got wrong positions. We've all got wrong positions, but. You know, them positions need to be supported. But the problem we've got now is that because of a lot of the neglect that happens or the or the disrespect or anything else like that, it's easy for situations where uh, a pedophile can get involved in the in the youth group and start, you know, trying to uh, manipulate a a a uh, a teenager through that youth group. And if it wasn't for their own volition of being able to see these things themselves and catch these things out and bring these things up with. A, the problem being, they didn't have enough people to be able to bring it up to. They had to go to, to, um, to Jason, and you know, everything shouldn't have to always go to Jason. And that's not me saying anything to Falco on that one. That's me saying everything on everyone else. Like, where is everyone else? Why are people seeing this? Why are we not more involved than our news? So this needs to be sort of pushed forward. We need more of a, a protective watch over these sort of things. Otherwise, we're allowing the, the harsher sides of the world that we know better. To seep in onto someone who is still learning their ropes around their own life, but has decided to take time out of that to learn ropes around the greater field of struggle that's going to end up encapsulating their life for decades to come if they stick through with this. And the, do you know what? The only way we're going to end up being able to keep someone like to stick through with this is if we respect them to a degree. Because someone who is of that class background, you know, the, anyone who knows me knows I criticize anyone from, from who is from an upper class background. That Falcon knows this better than anyone because a lot of the positions regarding that these certain things have come from from my rants of uh, of the aristocracy and office that any you know you keep pushing them away and you just, just don't don't actually dissertate don't criticize in a in a manner that's actually displaying and a, a position across and instead they're going to keep attacking them attacking them for them being a teenager attacking them for being um sort of like they're using slanderous terms like naive or amateur or anything else like that you are going to be beating them away from this position and when they reach a point of 21 to 25 they might turn around and go, fuck this, I don't want anything to do with this movement, I can't be asked for this, it might turn them off. Like, that could actually happen, and I don't think it's going to happen, I think they're going to pull through, but you know what, you've got to take that sort of respect with someone. Like, like the thing is, is that the only time you've really got an open door to convince anyone who's in the upper class of the aristocracy to come over to our side and actually pull them over and pull them away is when they're going through those sort of teenage years. No, 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 fair enough, fair enough. Um... But there's still not enough people about. It shouldn't be, it should be the, you know, the the four or five of us sort of flapping about to sort things out. More people need to step up and get involved. It needs to be a, a stronger. It needs to be a stronger build, a stronger movement. It needs to be as more. You know, it's a multipolar, um, in in inter and you know, um, intercommunal sort of movement that's building us up to the. You know the, the the actual sphere where we can have a chance to build socialism. New socialism is, is a much wilder concept of fucking what what needs to be put into place. And this is this is somewhat that's going to be. Um, ah, this is going to be somewhat that's going to take a lot of lot of work into understanding. But we've got to come together and 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 and, and, and crack. Crack these eggshells uh, with, with, within one another. We need to build a multipolar movement that is centered around the London proletariat and the lower working class, and needs to be against the bourgeois, what bourgeoisification proletariat and the labor aristocracy, as their scourge against the working class for their own benefits. Because there's always been what you ever see. What you ever see whenever there's been sort of a bit of poor is that the aristocracy get to get a nice little bit of benefits and the things stay either the same or worse for the working class. Sexism in Britain has not been solved for lower class people. or It's still a massive issue. But the labor aristocracy are fucking floating and loving off it. They fucking think it's a fucking past issue. A lot of them do, depending on who you speak to. You've got the fucking, obviously you've got also the fucking rad femmes and you've got the second wave feminists. The second wave feminists are the innate liberal ones that completely disregard it. And you've got the third wave ones, which are what people might call rad femmes. I don't like that time for calling them third wave feminists. Because um, the third way is actually a term for third position, which is a fascist uh, line of uh, logic. Um, what's it? The uh, line of philosophy. Yeah, the third position is uh, corporatism. But the uh, the third way feminists, something for that line, a lot of other identity political issues. These these two 
uh, problems are, um, what's the word, that, well, I mean, they're reactionary and they're revisionist and they completely disregard the point that feminism is supposed to build up to, if anything, they build feminism even more into the colonial superstructure than there ever has been, like a, a, eliminating what, and I'm a very virulent supporter of feminism, it really, it really puts, it puts a, uh, a bit of a, a bit of an issue, a bit of a hold on it, but, um, I had something to say and I can't fucking remember. This is why you should have notes. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna respond to some of these very quick, and then I'm gonna go on mute again because I'm making tea. But uh, this is some very interesting. Hey. Uh, you were replying to. Uh, can I tell? Maybe, maybe if we can get some time. Um, I do want to say something about this. Um, this documentary will not be monetized. Turned out to have a far right ranging impact than we thought it did. It's just the way it was organized was very on the spot. You didn't see me and Pink's in the background going to the editor to say, hey, hey, have you got this? Because, I mean, Comrade Number 3 and Jason, are, they just put together this crazy script. And Jason's like, I need some sort of comedy relief, which became, in a lot of ways, the central theme. And that was that guy in California ranting about North Korea. And so... It, in a way, it was a jumbled mess, but it kind of brought the message home about, like, solidarity of people. And uh, let's see. So, Falcone, that's uh, that's what you were applying to Falcone. This is very interesting. And, yeah, no, we're good. Like, yeah, we disagree, and we don't believe in the brown and red alliances. There's no alliance with fascism, but we are willing to be on a non-aggression position with them, on a ceasefire sort of action of the fact that, um, our current problem here is more the white supremacist fascists rather than the corporatists. Although we do oppose the corporatists, but it's like I said, I have a very bushido look of this. Like the problem is, is in liberal democracy, we have to face the music that we cut. That the bigger problem is going to be YouTube because they'll censor everything and they'll call. They will conflate fascists and communists and different socialists. They will do it on purpose. I mean, what's it? I'm sort of like torn though. Do we combat the the, the censorship of YouTube, or do we just literally take off a quarter of it? No, no, no. Think about this. Think about this. Think about this. No, no. Think about this. There's probably a good five or ten percent of fucking like big channels on here that have probably got some political message to them. The more and more that they try and censor politics, the more and more people go to these blockchain currency things. I genuinely think that might not be a bad idea. Move to one of these like like these um new video platforms that. Either do or do not take blockchain currency. It's not rather which one you go for. It's a war on philosophy, Carl. That's what we're dealing with right now. There's a war on philosophy. But I'm going to let you continue to speak. Yeah, no, yeah. But I mean, what's it? It's just one of them. Like, we can't fucking come together. we got to come to... Like, well, we come together on the issue, but we're not coming together as, 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 as uh, allies or anything like that. It's more so just this is a mutual problem. We need to deal with censorship, but... Um, that dies into the greater point of everything. Censorship is a big issue, but the um, the problem is a lot of people play into it because rather than pointing out criticism and dissertating and dealing with people they don't like, they think that the way you deal with bad ideas or things you don't like is by censoring them. It's a liberal, not just liberal, very middle class idea. Censorship is, is, is not right, whether you're censoring the dickhead or you're censoring the good guy, because at the end of the day, Okay, you know, in a lovely world, it would make sense to just censor all, all the bad stuff and, and, and all that lovely stuff. But we don't live in that lovely world. That we don't live in that lovely world where you can turn around and say you're being a dickhead for no reason. But or, you know, that it would be a good idea or the wise to delete the bad things of other people. Do you know what? We live in a world where things are in turmoil. Like as a good put, quote to put it back onto what kind of this is talked about in a video that was uploaded on Jason's channel a month ago. America is a good example of a place that's constantly in war, and you know. That's a good point to point out to stuff. If we're in a point where, you know, across the globe, there is constant war here, there, and everywhere, whether in small pockets of lumpen people struggling to survive, or, or fucking, uh, what's it, um, Arab people struggling to, uh, what's it, uh, struggling against uh, Zionistic genocide, or the, the South African uh, natives struggling for um, freedom from. Uh, the, the the still white colonial settlers that are in their country today. Um, what's it? Oh, I had a point. Where was I going with this shit? Oh fuck no! I lost a really good point then. What was I saying before I went on to about the examples? Shit. 
shit. This is why you don't want to have brain fog. It really fucks up your ability to continue a continuous sentence. Ah. Comrades, I apologize. My co-host is not used to being able to speak with this much of an outreach. Um, you're having... Um, you were telling me that the... Because I got some stuff to weigh in behind here, but you were talking about how the, the aristocracy and all its sections should be destroyed. Well, I mean, yeah, they should be destroyed, but I mean, what's it? It's like... From... Uh, from, uh, from, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 I know what I was not. I know, I know what I was just saying. I know what I was saying. So, yeah, yeah. From, after from, the from, no, no. Hey, listen, listen, listen. Before I forget again, no stop, illusion. stop, gonna, stop. Before, 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 stop. Before I forget again, because okay. I've remembered now. Okay. So the point I was getting to from from war across the world in all sorts of different aspects, from the lump, most bits of lumping in the first world trying to survive, to the mass amount of wars in all these other countries across the world, we need to you know we need to look at things from this perspective if everything is all in this turmoil why should we censor anything good or bad let the good let the good and the bad all ride because you know what you censor the bad you hide bad people's positions you should let bad people's positions exist yeah sure they might convince some people to follow them ways but it's also going to show people how much of a cunt they are you let people say more and more and more bad shit and it's more and more all over the place let it be but if you censor it all they're going to be able to exploit that bad shit without you being able to dissipate it and it be seen and it to be seen for its stupidity at the same time. Same for the good stuff. If you're allowing the censorship of the bad, the good was going to get censored too. Also as well, is it's going to be suspicious because anyone looking at it from a, a, a blank perspective will put it like that. No one's looking from a blank perspective. We'll put it like that. And I'm looking from like the people I give a shit about, so the proletariat and the lump home. They're looking at that and they're seeing, oh, well, all this is getting censored, but you're saying pretty hard stuff and you're not getting censored. But that's suspicious to me, and that makes it look like you're the ones with the system. So for all of you that think you ain't going to get censored because you're in some fucking daydream, well, guess what that makes you look like? That makes you look like you're a part of the system and the fucking the Nazis that you don't like are are against it, sorry. So you've basically given them more volition than you have, which, which is something that goes to show. I mean, it's like fucking, what's it? Remember the ICG? The ICG is... Um, Someone that was put onto the prevent measures recently. Do you know what wasn't put on the prevent measures recently? CPG BML. So that makes me a bit sus about them because some reason I, the uh, the UK government doesn't see them as an active enough communist party to be put amongst them lists. The CPB, which is a communist party I've been more critical of over the years, has been put on that list. So there's a certainly, even the SW, I think even the SWP is on there. So if the SWP can get on a fucking list for people who are seen for being put on the prevent measures and the cpg bml cannot that that goes to show that there's something about that party that people might need to be in it mm, well because as much as i support I've, I've tried to support them over the years and supported members that i know in there i know people in there that have dog shit positions and i know that their leadership is utterly backwards on a lot of different positions ranging east west south south and everywhere else in between But yeah, no. With the fucking way in which everything's going, we need to be we need to be more on the tongue and try to. But okay, yes. Um, so dual power. Dual power is a very, very, very important part, aspect towards struggling the first world. Because I mean, we need to do anti-war. We need to put pressure on the state. And we need to be engaging in strikes, and we need to be pushing for us and the other. But dual power is very, very important. Now in the UK context is still very important you know we've got to build up for the lumpen people there's so many lumpen people in this country that are disenfranchised and left behind and need to have that support behind them but it more folds into but with america not 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 that it, it you know that it's not you know this is something that's compatible across the first world in regards to opinion people but the um the america has the perfect sort of outset for it but not only that it has the most most necessity of all of them for it because of the uh I mean, we even have we we have, we still have our own like, nation of African Anglo's that, that that of course have their own struggle, but the African American struggle is a is a is a larger one and a, a, a bigger one and all that. And do you know what? It's a part of the same struggle. They they you know they connect to their African Anglo comers and they come together. This is because it's a part of Pan Africanism. But in, just to talk about sort of the because they're they're in a worse they're in an absolute terrible state in America. You know, the war in America. Coming back to that conversation again, African Americans 
and the indigenous people are hit the absolute hardest. And, um, you know, their dual power is a very important part of their struggle because, you know what, they ain't going to be turning around and saying, yeah, you know what, we're going we're gonna to just do white man's struggle. Just sorry to put it as broadly like that to anyone who's going to be a little bitch and get really all hissy about it, but they're not going to do white man's struggle. That's not what it's about. That's not what this fucking struggle's ever going to be about. And anyone who thinks they're going to just do white struggle, they're fucking norms. They're idiots. And they're falling into essentially fascist, fascist fucking worldview. Like, like fuck off with the white, like the fucking, um, we're going to do the whiteism or the white man, or the, we're going to do the, you know, we, we, you know, we can't do the whiteism, white, being white, this concept of being white is not just a, it's, you know, it's not just about your fucking, you know, your skin color is what is used to dictate it and is what gives you this power. But if you think that just whiteness is about skin color itself, it's so much more than that. And, and this is the problem, like being just like, the, like black liberation and their push forward is the most important thing for revolution in America. But they need dual power. Need, we all need dual power. And we all need to build it up for the revolution itself in the first world. But the revolution in the first world, um, you know, in America, that is going to be led by the African Americans. And they're going to need dual power to build up their movement amongst their people because they occupy the lump and the most with the indigenous people. They are the ones being killed out on the streets. They are the ones fighting out there. They are the ones that have led pretty much every American struggle for, for freedom and a socialist platform or otherwise in the last fucking 150 plus years, longer than that. So, so you know, the, the, they, these people have struggled for freedom for fucking time and they have happily struggled for the freedom of white people that they have, that, that have been in the similar positions to them. This is where you see all of these black people that might be against white white upper working class people white white uh middle class people they absolutely support the uh um what's it they absolutely support the lump of white people that are in the exact same struggle as them it's not about them hating white people it's about them hating whiteness and we all hate whiteness and white people endorsing and delving into whiteness always come into that aristocratic and petty uh, sorry bourgeoisificated proletarian position where they are chauvinistic and they are ignorant and they are very racist. And there's a lot of lower class people in the proletariat and in Latin America. And very many, many, many of them that also fall into this racist issue born from ignorance. And these people have to defend themselves because their lives are on the line because America refuses this from the police and from other people that hold these racist sentiments that are pushed onto them through propaganda day in and day out. And, you know, dual power is going to be the push and build for them to build their movement and be in control and the, the, the black population and the indigenous population, they will lead, they will hold the organs of power in a revolution in America. And at the point of that, they will be at the point of decolonization. And if they tell the whites to leave, that will happen. Like, if they, they tell you that's going to happen, that's going to happen. That might not happen. I can't speak for them. They might turn around and I can absolutely love to fucking keep you here and fucking all that and the other. But if the, if the, if the African-Americans and, and the indigenous people turn around and say that they don't want you on that land anymore you've you you stole it from the Af from the native americans you used the fucking africans to africa to build it up and, and as slaves killing fucking millions of them you fucked them all over we can't we 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 um we we we, we uh we, we can't turn around and be like, okay, no, that's inhumane of them. We're going to have to turn around and force them to have to deal with colonizers. No, 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 no. And this argument that because they're 300 million people means they can't fit in a country that could, like countries, because uh, countries, they're not all English and they're not all French and all German. They're a mixture of all these different European nations, English, French, German, Spanish, all sorts. They go back to their nations. 300 million isn't the whole population of the white people of America. And even the whole, even if you said the whole population of America, you could fit them all in Britain. I'm sorry, you can go on about how Britain's a 60 million country and it's struggling. We're not struggling because we can't handle more people. We're struggling because we're not housing people properly. We have way more houses than we have homeless people. Any of these countries can handle fucking hundreds of millions of people. You could fit the entire world's population in some of the smallest states of America. These people have a fucking shitty worldview when it comes to this overpopulation box or other stuff like that or decolonization. And they use these as all excuses. We've got to look at the problems here. And we've got to look at the fact that 
uh, white Americans, when they're, when they're pushed to the end of their leave, they end up identifying themselves in a more European basis on a basis than they do an American one. American patriotism is, is, a, is a projected to think for themselves, to keep themselves tied into something that they ain't because they want to, as much as they can, be that, sh that, that, that supposedly quote-unquote civilized European that's what they want to always be. They're, they're, they're just as bad as what the Germans were like, where they try and say that they're all different to the British Empire, would not like that, all this, that, and the other, and they do the exact same fucking thing. America is nothing different to the British Empire. The German Empire was no different to the British, either when they tried to rise up in the late 1800s. They went and copied them bit for fucking tattle. We won't be pirates and colonialists, goes and colonizes Southeast Asia and Africa and other places like that. Oh, no, we won't be that. We colonize the Middle East. Like, these, these people, because... You know, every, every one of these nations are all full of shit and full of lies, and they're all, you know, colonization is one of the most important things to deal with and pull back on. Like, like to come to my own issues, we got to look to English colonialism, namely the English colonialism in Wales, Ireland, and still in there, but to a lesser degree, Scotland. This, this is nasty business, especially for Wales and Scotland. I don't know, everyone miss, miss, miss fucking hears about Wales. Wales went through fucking hell and back too. It's not just Ireland that fucking suffered from famine on, up, after end because we fucking starved them to death. No, it was Wales too. We fucked them all over. We utterly were obliterating them. Irish people weren't counted as white for a fucking hell of a long time. And Irish people and Welsh people were fucking Bretons. They all come from that old G fucking thing. Irish people moved on and ended up becoming a different Celtic people because of the splits we, that, that were caused from all sorts of different issues in time, from the, the, the Vikings to the Romans to all sorts of different things in the past. The Celts have had a very hard time. Um, the Anglos, everyone has come in, and Normans too, have caused nasty problems for them, and they, they've, they've failed to beat the Irish, but they've put them in a position that has defeated them. They've not beat them. The, the Irish have lost, but they are certainly in a defeated state right now. And we need to support the anti-colonialism movement and bring back those movements about. It'd be nice to see the IRA return in force and become a representative of, of the Irish people's struggle and, and they're forced to bring back a freedom there. But it comes to looking at, you know, we've got to look at the past history of these places. Ireland, for all its history, had a lot of freedom struggles and it was tantamount to its relationship. But we've got to look at this as well. The, um, the thing we've got to look at here is... Wales is a nation that went through the exact same conditions, and Wales itself is a is a great example of this. You know, Wales means foreign, essentially, roughly in Cumric. Like they, they there's an insult that the British slapped onto them. They're, they're actually called Cumric. Right uh, hard hitting stuff for a second. Um, so he says, "What the fuck?" Uh, or she? I, I don't know the gender, so this uh, whatever. Um, whoever this person is, uh, hard hitting stuff. Uh, thank you for your comments. What the fuck do you mean, Maxwell, by being white, being a social contrary? Are you talking about chauvinism just like they say chauvinism? Okay, so whiteness, okay. The concept predates the word. Whiteness actually is rooted in the uh, Spanish expulsion of Muslims and Jews, which later informs on 1492 and all this stuff. Whiteness was, in fact, yes, an Anglo term. In fact, there is an actual Anglo liberalism disease running around. And yes, like, for instance, there's a Jewish American bourgeoisie that's European. And there's a German bourgeoisie, but people forget that they are actually trumped by the Anglo bourgeoisie. That Anglo bourgeoisie completely controls the United States. So the Jewish European Jew, uh, bourgeoisie and the German bourgeoisie, yeah, they they are very disconnected from from um, like the, the poor sections of the people that you know they may try to tap into. But they are not even the top dogs. It's the Anglo's. Like everybody's Always. obsessed with Germany. They don't look at British how. Like what? Okay, what is Zionism and Americanism? They're bright products of British. Oh, well, um, Zionism is literally Britain's old pet project. Churchill was yeah. even involved in the start of that one. Exactly. What? What? What does Brit? What? 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 What is? What is the United States? The state it's of a product of Britain. Australia and New Zealand all have in common. No, you know what? So the product. So, so the German Empire was a reaction to Britain as well. Um, the the Nazis were funded by America and Britain. Um, America started off with Britain, Canada started off with Britain, Australia started off with Britain, New Zealand started off with Britain, South, um, uh, South Africa started off with Britain, half of Africa was colonized by Britain, uh, half of fucking Asia was colonized by Britain. Like, you gotta look, like, people gotta look at this, like, Britain, Britain has fucked most of the world. And another thing, you know, like, they, 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 they were, you know, 
Britain was part of the part of, part of the uh, involved with Germany as well. They were influenced in all sorts of different nations. They were influenced in Russia and China in the in the uh, seventeen and eighteen hundreds, and trying to turn them into pet projects. Like, well, Germany didn't come in until the 18, late eighteen hundreds, but Britain Britain had been messing around with all these different nations for a long time after their war with Russia and things had built up. They started to build a relationship with them post industrialization era. Britain was building up tools in Russia and trying to build a relationship with Russia and colonizing them. After Britain had cooked China in the Opium Wars, they were trying to influence China to be a, a pet project because China had its own colonial relationships going on. These are things that have happened throughout the, the long ago history. Britain has fucked with every nation on the world. Every nation that's got these sort of like... And they, they didn't start it because Spain taught Britain how to do this. Spain really sort of kicked this all off. But Spain, Spain was the master teacher. Spain taught France and Britain how to how to be empires, and and they, you know Spain was sort of the last Roman Empire, if you want to look at them like that. Like they were the last ones that were really like the Romans, where they went around and pillaged and, and fucked around and, and wiped out fucking people just to the point of fucking building their own cultural basis and went around collecting gold. Like they were the really sort of like. But that's why they died out when capitalism came. They could not handle that. This was one of the biggest proofs that goes to show that the silly idea people have that Rome would have developed capitalism if it hadn't collapsed. Fuck off. Rome was nowhere near, and if it had ever got anywhere near the idea like that, it would collapse. And fe the feudal, the feudal excuse for the Roman Empire that was Spain did collapse. It could not handle capitalism. It was a weight on it, and it it, t it fell to pieces over a period of 150 years. Now the um. The British and the French empires rose up out of that, and they 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 built their basis off of that cult off that cultural idea that come up to it. That's why you know it's not just about the Romans and that history about that that comes to the Roman salute that also comes from the Spanish Empire too. But it was why all of us Roman salute from the Russians, the Soviets, the 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 Germans, the the fucking French, the British, the Americans, or did the Americans do the navy one where you supposed to, where you put your hand down to not show your hands dirty to the queen. I don't know why they're doing that anymore because they don't have a royal anymore, but sure, I guess they're still showing respect to the royals even though they're not in the monarchy. Um, everyone Roman salutes. So the thing is, is we got to look at that. That's a core foundational point that's involved in all of this. And Romanism is a core foundational point to the British imperialism. And British imperialism has spread across the globe and it's infected every nation from Russia to China to to America, to Canada, and all these other nations across the globe. And we've got to look to the core point of that, because what we're going to see, in my opinion now, is that Britain, um, uh, yeah, they were historically or former, no doubt about that, absolutely right. And Franco was a fucking absolute joke. You're right, I'm right. But the, um, so did the... Uh, Godspeed for that, by the way. Um, they're, 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 and 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 I am gonna. Tr we're gonna do our best to explain the vending process to Dr. Westwood, which we haven't finished. I have to convene with Jason. Uh, the Stone Soviet will have to convene with Jason. Jason's writing the official MRM book, uh, rule book. And just as promised, we aren't gonna force anything on you. We're gonna negotiate the the youth rules. But there's the universal rules, and then there's the youth rules. And the and not only is there universal rules and youth uh, rules, there's there's the mainstream rules too. Because like I said, within the mainstream, we're in two camps: the Federation camp and the American Leninism camp. Um, that's not as much a priority in youth because youth get to make their decisions. But um, my my kid is very enthusiastic about it. She just joined the militia recently. I, I, I'm, I'm a 13 year old that joined the militia. Go figure. See what you've done, Falcone. <laughs> um, you 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 encourage her. Well, like it's 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 the the thing is is that I don't believe that if they're not my kids, I can just tell these kids not to do anything. It's more important that if they like, even if they're going to get in trouble, might as well help make sure that the trouble doesn't destroy them and then get them out of trouble if they're in trouble. Because like the teenagers rightfully don't know who to trust. I didn't know who to trust as a teenager and I fucked up mad, you know. I mean, it comes into one of them. Like, you got you to gotta give guidance, but you can't be too, you got, I mean, you got to know when to crack down, but you can't crack down all the time. Otherwise, you end up creating rebellion. It, it, we didn't tell people this, but when you first approached me, you called me a geezer. And then Connor wow. goes, when she helped me figure out how to live stream this stuff, she's like, <laughs> she's helping this so Con old man Net could do it. Like, oh man. That. Wow, man. Like, you think Net sounds like an old man? Oh, oh man, I'm fucking. I, I'm, 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 I'm nearly half his age, I think. I'm, well, no, I'm not actually that much. I'm, I'm 36, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, so I'm, I'm more than 10 years younger than him. 
But I'm fucking, I, I speak like I'm, I'm fucking act like an old man because I'm an old grumpy cripple. I fucking, when you, what, 10, do you know, uh, what's it, 20, 23 years of being disabled makes you feel like you're fucking 70. Oh, by the way. Uh, well, well, do you know what, Franco might have been in power until 76, you know technically, saying, okay? No, 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 one thing, one thing I want to mention about this is Franco might have been, like, actually in power until 76, but he was an advisor for longer after that, like, he had a lot of, like, he, he's, you know, Franco didn't just vanish off the map when he stepped down from fucking power, like, and, and his, 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 he, he's still, his influence from his existence Regardless of how much they might, how much the government might hate him, whoever's in power or not, Spanish government is not just like one in party power. It's this block of all these different fucking parties, and it's a mess. Spanish Spanish government is always a fucking mess. So when we to look at this like this, we've got to look at this or this perspective. Um, Francoism is always going to be able to prevail in Spanish government because they are deadlocked all the time, and the only thing that's going to smash that deadlock is fascism. And that culture of fascism has not gone away. Spain has been a husk. Spain is like the Chernobyl of Western Europe, if done to use uh, a, a meme YouTuber I'd heard say with this once before. It is, he was mean as a joke, but to be honest, it sort of fills in there. It's the Chernobyl of Western Europe. They're, they're, they're fucked. And there's not, there's not me trying to disrespect my Spanish comrades. Like, all respect to you and what you have to go through, but what you had to go through was, was, was fascism and then just sort of being dropped on your head when the fascist leader decided he couldn't be asked anymore. We will convene about this at some later time. Just like that's another thing is like the ones that really are helping Falcone as far as the quote unquote adults. Um, see, I don't like to say that because Falcone is, if I'm from, coming from a Jewish background, I would consider her more, yeah, she's a kid, but she's a young adult. She, like it's referring to her as a child. I try not to say child. Like sometimes I'll say child and I don't mean to be condescending. I'm trying not to be condescending. But like, um, I mean, it's, I will convene uh, with Falcone on this, and, and maybe, Falcone, you can step in at the very end of it, but I don't know if we'll be able to do that, but um, I... Sh uh, right on, Alex, right on. The, the, one, the, 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 the three, the, there's a thing called Guardians in MRM, overseeing MRM Youth, the, the three ones that have met this qualification is myself, Dark Snowy, and Connor Gillis. See, Anglesis works with Falcone, but Anglesis and Falcone are almost like gripey siblings, so... They, they, they piss each other off and they're fine the next day, but it's not the same kind of thing like when you know you and Connor Gillis argue. It's more of a it's hard it's really hard to explain. It's 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 Maoist sibling siblingness that I cannot explain to you worth anything. It's very similar to what what the anarchists go through. Wait, what she is a young Falcone. adult. She is. My 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 kid's a young adult. In in my religion, when a woman uh, when a woman's this, this... when a girl's twelve, she's a woman and and when a boy's thirteen, he's a man. Not well, they're still kids, but they are adults. I mean, you, you go for. I mean, that's that's sort of like the old school upbringing thing is that when you reach that age, you have got to start having some independence about yourself. But uh, Falco, do you, do you understand what the word contradiction is? Because um, I, I know that, that I like. No, I love that. This happens game. to be a contradiction. I just have to point no, no, out. No, that. I'm not I trying to be a cunt. I'm being funny, but the, the, shit. <laughs> no, this is exactly what the Mao, the advanced Maoists always say. They disagree with third worldism because they're not actually against it. <laughs> well, well, what's it? If you support it, then you're probably going to be a, a third worldist well, rather than a Maoist. They, There's a difference. This is right, that the Maoists are the closest to the third worldists. They might be, but I mean, there's a, there's a, there is a there is a staunch difference. Then that's that um, someone who's a Maoist in the first world, who like like. What's it? Maoism in the first world itself, on its own, can't prevail because it's not an ideology that was sort of centered around that. It does. It is. There's a universal platform, but it needed that advancement of third worldism because it was missing something that could connect it and universalize it to the first world. Now, people's war on a global basis was what was the was is the project for pushing that forward and comes into the point of that, like, and and that I, I that is a multi part of position. Saying. See the the, the 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 most advanced. Yeah, I know, I know. That's what I know. That's what you meant, but that's what I mean. You said I, I I'm going to say that I disagree with it because I'm not against it, which it just sounds funny. I just to thought me. it was funny. I just thought it was funny because like I, Engel says, 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 yeah, all third worldists, even the, the even the ones like Romero that are MLs are still just Maoists. <laughs> but hey, that means you're acknowledged by the like. But that's the advanced Maoists. The advanced Maoists are trying to look at a world revolution because that's always what the Maoists have wanted was a world revolution. Why do you think that they, they, they're growing a relationship with the anarchists? Now, it's funny because 
the most fascinating thing I've seen with the mouse and the anarchists is they love to argue with each other. They live for arguing with each other. It's like this oh, dialogue. Like, this just, have this have. is fucking malice. That is, oh my god, like fucking arguments to all cunts. Including but, myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's, it, it's funny because, like, not all third world has come in through Maoism. Some of them come through Marxism, Leninism instead. And in the third I mean, I got to world, third worldism before I got to Maoism. I, I was a Marxist Leninist, then I got to the third worldism watching Jason, and then I jumped to the Maoism a lot later. I believe that'd be a misery in my Well, okay. Now, people's war in the first world is technically legal in terms of if we went out and tried to storm the capital, it's not going to fucking work. Uh, we well, also... Yeah, of course. But, 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 um, but no, but it's no, but people's war just innately just saying people's war is universal is not so much a trick as, as easy as that because it is, but it's global people's war, it's universal, which means it's very, very much going to be different struggles and different fronts, and they're going to change as things go on. With dialectical materialists, we're empiricists, so we should be flowing with the way in which the fucking grain drops. That's why I don't like. I don't like what um, a lot of Maoists like to hold on to the sort of Mao definition of people's war. It's so restricted to this specific, we go and run into the countryside and do this in-out struggle. It's like, yeah, no, that's a good argument for the third world's front yes. line oh, wait, of people's struggle. Stuff. But we've got to build up, before you say this, I was just going to say, we've got to build up a people's struggle line that fits to the different areas of the globe. And not all of them are going to be grabbing arms and going to the countryside. Some of them are going to be building up food shelters and homeless shelters and making sure that we've got places for people to squat, working with the anarchists and stuff like that. It's a multipolar movement, not just on the different sort of tendencies that might be working together, but in the different areas of the world, the class divide. We've got to, it's international into communalism we've got to bring everything together uh to, to, to answer this question is, is africa the front line in third worldism i see a lot okay it's the third world that's the front line it's the third world in the third the third world as a whole in the third world uh with respect to the differences of the various regions that make up the third world so like we don't necessarily treat the global uh south like the middle east but no, third no. world as well as the demarcus and even even a lot of maoists as well as the most enlightened MLs, and of course, the, you know, the smart, really smart anarchists that understand the streets in the first world, there is a consensus. This is what's happened. The okay. global classified theory was proven. and But that's not exactly their roles. I mean, it's just that the third world has saved that theory. And they, they, they've always said it came from the MLM, but it was the third world that saved that theory. Now switch up today, real MLM started showing their face in both the first world and the third but world. But you know what, though? Like, 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 the point is that I, I've got to absolutely, like, Praise the praise the point you pointed out there, Robert. You don't have to look into the truth of this because North Korea, they are the only ones that like out of any nation in the world, like an actual solid state nation that's properly helping the people of Africa in any way would be North Korea and they help the I mean they the uh, one of Egypt's biggest training partners and they're always working with countries like Egypt and other places like that. They were a big supporter of NASA. Uh, they were a supporter of Gaddafi in his early years and even supported him against NATO when everything was going on there. They, this isn't Africa, but it steps up to the North Koreans' position. They helped send military aid to the, to the Syrians involving weaponry and training and other bits and pieces like that. Like The DPRK are always willing to help anyone and everyone out in the third world when it comes to the problems of which they're facing and put their help there. And it's a part of their ideology because Juche, um, as a motion, uh, it's foreign policy and the way in which it looks at like not just revolution but anti-imperialism and end to imperialism and bringing a front to that because a very important part of the Juche movement is that you are to bring an end to the you're going to bring an end to these empires and the only way you're going to do that is through third world the only, no, the only, way, the only way the only way the only way you're going to do that is by third world struggle and china yeah china 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 seems to exploit them all the time but Fucking, what's it? I mean, selective criticism of imperialism, I guess. I disagree with this. I think uh, I, 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 I'm still going to disagree with you on that, Falcon. I, I actually, I actually have taken the DPRK pill. It, yeah, no, I think, I think, I think you need to like look a little deeper than that because you can't just turn around and say, 
because because you know what's funny the position so the article I was shown to turn around and say that the Juche are around said I'm not going to talk about any of the political ideas that are actually being held by these two factions what that's very important you're not going to talk about whether one has fucking the good idea or the bad idea because that is very important I need to know what they believe I can't just say oh well one wrong the other because do you know what if the ones are shithead they deserve to be wrong they couldn't care if it was democratic or not fuck off like what one's one's fucking what could be absolute fucking hellfire to them they could be left fucking chauvinist or the other one could be right opportunist i don't know i can't just have some word of someone who isn't from fucking career themselves telling me how to fucking dictate that um the the dprk has just been read by the right opportunists all the way down they don't agree with class struggle even though their symbol is literally a representation of class struggle I think one, another thing I want to point out is that uh, I know these uh, Cuban Maoists, for instance, and they do not have a sectarian view of the Cuban Trotskyists or the Cuban anarchists or the Cuban Marxist-Leninists. And I think that this gets another difference that uh, I agree with the Engels is that there is a serious difference between third worlder Trotskyists and first worlder Trotskyists. First worlder Trotskyists, for the, the on an individual basis, it's different each time. But as groups go, first world Trotskyists are very misinformative. They almost have pseudo-fascist tendencies. Uh, like, they're very corporatist-minded, first worldist-minded, very um, projectionist, I've noticed. Shitheads, to put it, to put it in a lump and terminology. And they've become very angry with Bundists and Maoists because Bundists and Maoists took, took Trotsky away from them. I mean, the problem The problem is is that this is a problem amongst all of everyone here, there, and everywhere, from Maoist to Bundes to here, there, and everywhere. Everyone wants these fucking leaders to latch onto. I know it's lovely, it's nice, it's great, we can lick everyone's bum holes out, but we get so caught up in leaders that it doesn't even seem like people are liking them because they've made good ideas anymore. It's just they're liking them because it's easy to cheer on here, there, and everywhere, cheer about oh, people who are, to there. the point who've even done genocidal stuff. But, like, you know, the... Um, this is where they end up people missing the good guys because you know why is anyone cheering on about Gramsci? Oh, because Gramsci is not an easy leader to go here, there, and everywhere. He's not some fucking chad lad to go talk about. But, 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 yeah, that's phenomenal as well. But no, no, but it comes to that. But this is one of the things that parent pranks me out is because everyone wants to lick ass these like revolutionary fucking idealist like I'm not, they're not idealists themselves but this idealistic image of these revolutionaries that have existed that they miss out on the uh they miss out on the fucking um yeah ideas definitely trump leaders and this is what it comes into is that they, if they look at they, it seems like they're looking at leaders before ideas because if they're looking at ideas first they would be looking at gramsci and not looking just for big leaders that they can shape themselves around because at the end of the day why the fuck do we have to defend people that have shit ideas and not look out for the people who do have good ideas? And Gramsci is a very important one because it's where my, it's where my position on the aristocracy comes from. That's where everyone's position on the aristocracy should come from. The aristocracy is a threat, and that is what, uh, you know, uh, Gramsci, Gramsci, very much important point into the uh, let's feel in situations that they cannot be trusted with the reins of revolutionary struggle, otherwise they will burn it into the ground. Uh, I'm going. I'm not going to highlight any of the comments on Vietnam. I'm just going to stay uh, like I already did one. Uh, I do. I am very sympathetic to Vietnam. Vietnam is not in a good position. There are a lot of socialists, both in the civil society and the government, and they don't necessarily like the market performance. But this is the point where MLM was correct. The problem is people take it too far. Say, oh, there's no socialism left. It's not that there's no socialism left. The process, the revolutionary process that keeps socialism was destroyed. I and, mean. Like, you know, socialism has, like, I'm going to give the Demarchist definition of socialism, and then you can give the scientific socialist definition of socialism. I mean, but to be honest, the though... Let me explain the Demarchist uh, uh, definition. There are two factors that must exist in socialism. If these two factors do not exist, it's technically not socialism. One is the equilibrium factor, was one is the mere crack factor. Now, the mere crack factor, I'm talking about that your labor value shouldn't be robbed, like surplus value being ripped off should be ended. That's a, a one probably so 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 you, your labor shouldn't be taxed by bosses basically and that's not very dialectical i understand but you're getting I, this is how i break it down to common people because it's a it's a it's a thing we do then the other one like the equilibrium factors everyone's it's not just free health everyone's entitled to housing everyone's entitled to the shit gaddafi was telling people that they were actually deserving of everyone deserves a house everyone deserves warm water everyone deserves communication everyone deserves community Everyone deserves uh, to be a permanent member of society. 
you know, and, and, and for people to, 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 we should aim for direct democracy as an end game. Although the, there is a dispute between Marxist, Demarchists, and anarchists as what that transitional process is. I mean, Marxists speak of the, uh, the proletarian state. Um, anarchists speak about, um, you know, uh, the federated anarch. Uh, Demarchists, we have a very, we like the third rules, don't think that there's one suit, but we do prefer uh, an advanced version of Jaha Maria. And instead of mutualism by the proto-anarchists, Dr. Weisfeld did come up with demarcho-mutualism in the same way where Donna Newman ripped Trotsky from his context and put it into a different context. Because that's what we do. We do that shit. We do it on purpose because it works. It's like, to me, to me, Trotsky's ideas should have been written for Egypt, not for, for, for Europe. Because Egypt is the one that keeps having a revolution repeatedly. And if we were to move past half and rely on alliances with the side, we need to look at why does Egypt keep having a revolution? The answer is Nassar, Nassar, Nassar. You can't bleed the Arab people from their heritage. It's not fucking possible. Mm. But, um... In order... By the way... Falcone, if you ever want to be deputized by the Federated ML and Cadres, you can't keep making videos called They're Not Your Friend. I know why you're doing it, kid. I get it. I get it. I applaud your rim logic, but the... I don't. I know. It's, it, Black Red Guard does a similar thing. It's like, I'm running on the Kill of All Settlers platform. I love it when, when, when Black Mexican people and all that do that, because they're totally justified for it. The problem is, is nobody knows what that means. Jason's got a point. Nobody even remembers what Kill Whitey meant. It was an anti Wall Street statement. It was it was a real anti colonial fucking thing that emerged in the sixties and seventies, people realized. Like, oh, wait. You know? But um Indeed. But I mean, it comes of, to I that. Believe, I, listen, Falcone, I believe in you and I believe you have the ability to synthesize. You may one day find yourself synthesizing Duce with do not Ducheism, but Duce ideology. With, with 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 certain things that Peruvian communists said and certain things that the Naxal said, you might be surprised what you might conclude as time goes by to your own conditions. Because we know That's... what she would do. She'd arm all the Mexican lumpen. She would do it on purpose. She says, "Hey, you know that Mexican is a misnomer because technically it's Machica and technically we're Aztecs and Mayans and all these other things." I could see Falcone breaking the, the barrier. I could see it happening. Okay, but so one thing I want to get into in the chat is, okay, market socialism is not having billionaires, and Vietnam actually has billionaires, so it's not just simply market socialism. That is definitely a restoration of capitalism. Like, I understand why you would want it to be like that. Vietnam put a lot of billionaires into this, but here's the thing to know about Vietnamese history is when they tried to implement um, planned economy after going through not just the war with the French, not just the war with the Japanese, not just the war with the French again, not just the war with the Americans, not just the war, you know, with the Chinese. They went to war with the Cambodians and liberated them too. They have been destroyed. They were diffused. When they went to build planned economy, it fell for its arsehole, not because planned economy couldn't survive, but because Vietnam was absolutely screaming it was struggling it had been under all this way and the biggest nation that called itself a socialist next to it fucking hated its guts and wanted to invade it before and will invade it again so they were terrified and struggling and they come they capitulated backwards they fucked up they revised they revised back towards um capitalism vietnam uh, sorry cuba is actually getting into a similar position now because of the way the american sanctions have beaten them into the I ground and anyone that and anyone that tries to attack anyone that anyone that tries to attack cuba without understanding that first needs to think about think again about it because the cuban people are not liking this and you've got to get behind them cuban people wait 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 wait, wait for jason's ultimatums on these things because these ultimatums will make it safer for us to have these conversations but it, connor, it's, by the way connor gillis has already said by the way all she wanted to say about china you know she kind of doesn't want to dive into it anymore I i'm not talking that. about china i'm talking about dprk and vietnam no see but this is this is all the parts we're talking about the marxist states because that's what jason it doesn't matter about. like well well i shouldn't yeah, i shouldn't have to keep quiet just because fucking some people have insecurities no, that no, they no, need no, to no, deal no. with listen listen i told you about the truth is the truth i'm just talking about it as it is the truth is the truth we we need it the, the problem is we have not even dived into palestine this is what's starting to get really aggravating 
this year should have been the year of free Palestine, just as last year was Black Lives Matter. That like I have community. dived into Palestine. I have a whole fucking protest and on I'm my gonna channel. Be honest, I have dived into Palestine. And that piece of shit Biden in office. It's like bread tube is in the fucking White House. The radical liberalism is fucking here, dude. And it's not doing anything about like the police force has been tripled. I swear this 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 guy sniffs girls' hair and he's brain dead. He's a he's he, he's like he's like he's like a crypto pedo in the White House who's obviously under the control of Kamala Harris. I'm sorry. But fuck this dude. Fuck the rat lips, man. It's like this is a serious problem we're having. This is the censorship on steroids, and we're going to have to fight this. And we can get Dr. Weisfeld to understand a lot of things. But, like, I'm talking about the fact that we – it's not that we have to be oversensitive about when debating whether the Marxist states are still socialist or not. We don't have to be. It's that we've got to understand that shit – this is where Falcone does have a streak of righteousness. It's over. We lost. And it's if, if we realize it's over, we can pick it up again and say, okay, well, maybe it's not over. Well, we well exactly the point up. I'm trying to fucking make. That's exactly the point I'm trying to fucking make and that you're stopping me from making. Because oh, that I'm would point that. out that it's over for fucking China. There we go. The fucking thing's out. I'm sick of that. Okay, so if Falcon can say it's over, we lost. Exactly. Well, that's the point I'm fucking making. But I'm trying to break it down and be respectful to the different places. Because I know the history. Especially yeah. when it comes to, I, I, I've spoken to Jason from Vietnam before, and I was going to go on about Cuba, and I was going to go on about the DPRK. I'm talking about the third world, big, the small nations. Can China I, is its own what shit I know, state. What I've learned about Cuba recently, I've learned some very interesting, uh, chilling news. I've heard some so, horrible things over the last few months. So, so as we know, uh, the, the actual Cuban population is not going around saying, America, save us from the Venezuelans. None of that shit's happening. All right, I'm talking about these these Cuban youth, like they, they love Castro and they love Che, and they're very upset with the market economy in Cuba. But they're but 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 they're afraid that bread tube is going to like see. Look, let, let's point out some Bosch hypocrisy for a second. This is typical hypocrisy. Down with you, Caleb Moppin. You like China because you know when which is a capitalist imperialist country, and so you know now down with market socialism. Bosch, you sound like an idiot. You sound like an idiot. Okay, you're preaching market okay. socialism, which just like looks just like the shit you're tearing down, and this is where we're at now. This is where we're at now. We're at that shit where we're making these little uh, uh, mental masturbation debates, and you know this is why I don't believe we should. I don't believe in Trav and, uh, for instance, and uh, no, I do believe in Trav, but I don't believe in him and leftism. To, and I told leftism this: I don't believe in you guys going after Bosch anymore. Here's something it's that I'm time. It's not worth our time. It's not worth. It's not worth it. I think dead man. This is where dead man had the strongest point. We should stop fucking debating the far right. Well, it doesn't I mean, work. There've been people who've had that point like longer ago before that. I've been saying that myself. It's been stupid. All you, these people are fucking one trick ponies. It's the same shit. You just need to dissertate them and move on. They're not worth our time. They're they're, they're jokes. Not, not people. People in the real world don't. Get, you say Vash, you say who? What? Well, you, what the fuck you want about? What about a shop? One reason why I say Cuba has a measure of socialism, although it's questionable if their economy still fits that 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 roles with all the terrible market reforms, the people yeah. want socialism. It's engraved in their belief system. The problem is, they will fight, but they'll fight in protest. They're not. They need to get back to the guerrilla uh, uh, mentality, and unfortunately, that's that might take more fear of the United States. And I don't like to talk like that. I'm just saying that when you talk about the material reality of what we're at, capitalism is going to kill us. Climate change is killing us. Imperialism has reached that globalism phase. We're seeing contrad and, and, and here's what I what I do agree with Don and Newman on. If we took out Americanism, Zionism, no, it wouldn't destroy imperialism, but it would get rid of this globalist phase. And if we if we were back at I'm not sharing another world war. I'm saying that we got to stop trying to prevent what's already happening. We got to. You know what? You know what? I, 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 I'm I'm the I'm the I'm the uh, and this isn't me. This is not Nets' opinions. This is just mine. But I'm the guy who will say the hardest stuff. It kind of does need to be one. Okay, there does need to kind of be another world war, right? I'm going to fucking outright say it, because here's the fucking thing. When is the most revolutionary struggles ever happened in history? Franco-Prussian War, World War One, fucking Mongolian war, uh, war during the Russian Civil War when they had their revolutionary struggle, The um, which was not really the Russian Civil War. It's more the invasion of Russia from loads of different fucking countries coming together. World War Two, the Cold War, these contentions of imperialist powers. So do you know what? Yes, 
the US and China, they do need to butt heads somewhere. That is going to happen. It needs to come together. And it needs to be not just US and China, the US, China, EU, UK. If they're all going to start doing their inter-imperialist rivalries, brilliant. Let them clash. Let them fucking argue because that is what breeds revolutionary struggles. The friction between inter-imperialist powers is the most revolutionary times in history across the globe. First, third and second world across the fucking globe. Do you uh now now I got now I, I want to know if uh it, it, like l l l like as I've been trying to convey this to the public a bit here, um, we are you 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 agree with me? We're gonna do every and I hope Falcone is listening. We're gonna do everything to make sure Mary and Sainer should hear that. Yeah, you want drinking with the Marxist Falcone is is your partner here? Like not not Falcone. Sorry, like that, that's sorry, Connor Gillis. But I want Falcone to help vouch for this because I talked to Jason. Jason agreed. Because Mason is trying to do this thing called drinking with a Marxist, and I don't know the history the way that Mason and Jason and like um, uh, uh, Prytunes knows this, but there was this guy in Japan who was a Marxist, and he used to do drinking with the Marxists, and so I quit drinking. And he, he see Mason knows how to get to my lump and sentiments. When I was drinking, I was drinking Steel Reserve 211. Mason once drunk a whole Steel Reserve in front of me. He's like, he's like, you know, I know where your culture really comes from. I may not know everything about the Southwest, but I know what the lump and proletariat in the Southwest drink. I was like, no, you don't. He pulls out a 211. I'm like, damn it. That's me and Mason, bro. He's like, I'm like, damn it. How did you know this? He's so cheating. Like, well, but that's where, Con like, Connor Gillis should be. Like, look, think about it. So the trap has a co-host. It's, it's, it's leftism today, which is, which I agree with this move. Um, you got you're my co-host yes jason gets three co-hosts he's got me he's got trav and he's got red scare right but red scare should have connor gillis as a co-host definitely definitely we need to push this because like all those that work in with all, all three teams within the american leninism camp whether we're talking about cheap team Danky, which includes his party and fek whether we're talking about team trav which includes leftists of the day or whether we're talking about uh, Team Red Scare, which definitely includes Connor Gillis, and I would say to some level does include a Dinky and, and, and Trav. See, the funny thing about Team Red Scare is it, it's, it crosses over into the other American MLs. Team Team Jet Scare. Well, as I told you, he wants line struggle within the radical MLs against the dogmatists. He want, he's joining us for the anti fun revolution. Irony. And Danky, Danky, Danky is getting very radical. Like I've, I don't know if you watched him lately, but he's pushing uh, for uh, unity with the Maoists. Like that, his ML party allows the Maoists in. They want to work with all these organizations, and they're talking. He did a whole dissertation against the Fourth of July. That's good. Uh, yeah. Um, if people want to see that, I I, I, I corresponded a little bit with Danky. Danky's a solid dude. I've never spoke to him, so I wouldn't know. Uh... Sounds like Dante comes in. There's a British princess in pink, and Donkey and Donkey Kong did us the justice by throwing the wheelbarrows at the bourgeoisie. <laughs> you, you know, we forgot Donkey. our we forgot yeah. this. We forgot the the path of the far left appropriating you know the 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 the, 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 the slogans for our uh, to suit the needs of you know. Uh, a, pro a world proletarian culture against, you know, uh, first world injustice. This is a thing now. We're going to do this. We have to do this. Besides, if we don't, it won't be funny. And we need to be funny about this because, unfortunately, spectacle rules today. So what happens when spectacle is telling the truth? Uh, I mean, spectacle can tell the truth, but, I mean... It's, a, it's always... a challenge, but, like, throw the truth in every spectacle you find. It, it, it disrupts... But like the problem is, is I don't encourage you doing this on the Vosh stream because people have lost their channels for, for in, in five minutes just by going up to Vosh and challenging him. Uh, there is something very suspicious mm -hmm. about Vosh. What's well, it? I probably end up just calling him a pedophile because he is wrong. You know, um, this is something else I wanted to say. For everybody that's upset that Jason Unruh and Caleb Moffin did split or didn't split. There was no split because they were never politically aligned per se. Rather, they, they had problems with the same machine and they, they, they have associated with each other. It's a bit not tactical to go to, 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 to challenge all the populists right now because consider this. And this is where we uh, are more trusted to criticize Jason on this. Jason should have actually challenged Caleb Moppin a long time ago. 
That's what Willow yes. said. But but I said to the audience, and I because I know that you were part of you're like you're like Pride Tunes. You you go back in Jason's audience actually, like you, like real actual spot, real actual support of what Malice Rebel News represents, right? Well, like like him, what I what my complaint was: where were you all, you guys, when Jason was getting isolated? Now I'm not slapping you; like I just want you to apply because now things are getting serious. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not slapping you in that way. I'm just, I'm just like, think, we've had this conversation. We're kind of like self auditing so people know what our concerns. Yeah, are. Yeah, I mean, I know. Well, I've been, I've been all over the place, and I've been about or not about. But it's, you know, I've only been a communist for six years. There's a lot of people who've been watching Jason for the what, 12, 12, 13 years. He's been doing videos now, so a lot of people could have got more involved and could have built up this movement more with them and when Jason was in much better health, I know a lot of the old fans of Jason who might be here might have seen how much healthier Jason used to see him back in the day compared to how he is now. Well yeah, and a lot a lot of people have no clue just how much that actually did have to do with Rain. And how Rain uh deliberately kept him away from the trans community and they popped up gender warriors and they ignored the lump in trans people which actually have some of the most nightmarish conditions in you know uh arizona texas nevada holy shit nobody wants to be trans in nevada yeah coming out against rain was one of the most important things for jason because it allowed him to actually first put his actual perspective on like and not his full understanding of it all just his actual perspective on like trans people themselves and his respect to them and it's always been and this is one of the things I've always hated. Now, Jason is an old dad, dude. He's got his own mistake for like this. And that's why he doesn't let them drive anything because he knows he's wrong. Or at least knows that he's probably not got the best idea around it because he's not trans. What he's always said and what he believes is that you should listen to the trans people. Not go about yourself fucking trying to say that they are this or they are that. Or we should follow this or follow that. In what Jason will try and dissertate and, and complicate with is their, their SJW issue. And the people that are, you know, utilizing this for some pretty shitty ideas. Now, Jason's had some actual worse ideas longer ago in this past, but in, this was a newer, newer phenomenon to him at that point. I know it's not been a new phenomenon, but do you know what? A lot of us, that I learned afterwards that there's been a trans movement going on for a fucking long time, especially, like, strongly since well, the LGBT was, movement was really strongly in the 70s onwards. So, you know, the... Um, you know, it's been for a long time. I, I never heard about any of this shit, really, until 2012, I think, 2013. And I never really bothered to actually properly consider it until I was a communist. So it, it's sort of one of them things where it, it's completely locked away from a lot of people until a lot longer years in life. And Jason's, what, 40 now? So he took it, it, you know, it's good that his position come round and he actually opened his eyes to it and he wants to listen to the trans people and not... And his head stuck in the clouds. Well, he never hated them. That's that's the funny part. He never hated them. He was never actually afraid of them. It's like right now everybody's onto the gender warriors. They they don't they they actually censor like actual trans struggles, like the real ones, because they need an internal conflict. Because like if you listen to Falcone, for instance, or the or let's say the Black Internationalists, they don't hide that they're trans. They're not ashamed of that, but. They take they they're more involved in their national liberation struggles and and their connection to the lump of proletariat. That's more where they're coming from. And that's that's what's that's what that's what I think Red Tube is trying to stop. The Radlibs want to make everything about hey the third world has a lot of people with patriarchal views and Muslims. You got to stop them them Islams and you gotta you gotta turn them into LGBT superheroes. And guess what? You just you're 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 basically taking the the, the the struggles of something, and you're using it against a, a population that may not fully understand that isn't necessarily in the same urbanized conditions where trans people typically emerge. And I'm not saying trans people exclusively come from the urban. I'm not saying that, but I am saying that that's usually one of the common manifestations. So I think it's because in the urban, that's when gender gets questioned the quickest. Well, it's more so. Okay, no, it's more so about this. It's not about whether it's questioned the quickest or not, because. I mean, to be honest, like that's a point to that, and the, the point to that is not so much about whether it's just question the quickest. It's also question the slowest, and well, it's it's answered the quickest in the first in in, in the in the lumpen, like and in the, in the working class, like you answer quicker because you've got to, and in the lumpen they eventually get a way to dissociate and dissipate because you eventually stop caring, but you put yourself at danger, so it's a hit or miss one with that one. But the proletariat, we'll go from that angle. So 
it's not just about this. So when you've got to survive, you've got to break your back, you could be killed for your issues. You've got to work your ass off in jobs that you might not get if you've got if you appeal to this. You might lose family. You might get thrown up with your family. You might you know what? You might even have a family who's fascist enough that they'll fucking kill you if you're like that. That can happen, especially in America. So the thing is, is that being in the lower class and being trans, you will just end up bottling it up. You won't express it because your family will hate you. Your friends will hate you. The police might fucking kill you. People around you might kill you. You might fucking... It's, it's a million and one different things that go wrong with the people that are in the lower class. That they, people in the fucking labor aristocracy don't have to fucking deal with in their life. And it's people like Rain that end up blocking Jason from speaking to the same people that they, they're, they're blocking everyone from speaking to because they block these trans people from speaking to. The lump and the lower class trans were the most disgusting things ever. And it goes to show this big break between the labor aristocracy and the lump and how they function, trans or not. Yes. Now, I'm trying to think of how to work Falcone here because we can't we can't take up this entire stream to, well, I mean, like, not entire stream, this, we can't make this go on forever because I want Dr. Weisfels to see this kind of as a testimony. So, like, give me a second here because I, I realize I might have to kind of make you a mod, maybe. I just don't know how to fucking do that. You know what's sad? You know what's sad, bro? Falcone knows exactly how to do that. Kids. Freaking kids know shit, but I don't know, and it's embarrassing. Uh, I don't know anything anymore. I give up on, on I give up on knowledge a long time ago. I just I just do the big stupid now. I have no fucking clue how to make you a mod, dude. Um, why do you right click on me? Uh, do I okay through Streamyard or do I do this through? No, I mean like literally just right click on me in Streamyard. Just right click on me and see what happens. What is your agenda if I put this link to the thing? Because I, I, I might have you on here, but I'm not sure if I can. So what's your agenda with me doing that? Does this help make people into a mod? You know what? Yeah, no, I think so. Maybe. I'm just saying, like, right-click on me and see if, see if a menu comes up or something. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do you both a very big solid. I am going to bring Falcone on. I'm going to go have a secret and let you two have it out. Ha-ha, the hell to help well, old men. Because I am sorry. Like, the fact of the matter is, when Dr. Weisfeld, who's in his early 70s, understand, like, he may not understand all the streams yet, but when he understands more technical crap than I do, I know that, oh, man, I'm so far behind all this technology. It's bad, bro. My kid knows shit. My oh, man, I'm no good with technology myself, either. Like, it's fucking, oh, I used to be, pre-2011, where everything past there, it got complicated. So, they changed the, pro they changed the policy and then let everyone know. Damn it. I, I, I don't like, want people clicking on this. There you go, Falcone. There you go. Oh, no, you idiot. You shouldn't post it in the chat. <laughs> the link that I got it. I got it. Do you have the link? Close, I'm not get, sure delete, I'm delete, delete it now, then. Link, because it says block user, put user in timeout. Put myself in timeout. Block. Can't this thing just let me? Okay. All right. Okay, I'm going to go and meet, have a cigarette. I'm going to let you guys discuss this thing. Um, and you get the opportunity to express your uh, stuff to Dr. Weisfeld. He will be happy to know that Jason was proud that you adopted the Machika movement's line. We are not Latina. We are not Hispanic. Comrade number three salutes you. All right, I'm going to go on mute and we'll let you guys talk. Um, is Falcone, um, can we hear her? No. Why can't we hear Falcone? Is she not in the stream? I don't know. Maybe, maybe um, she because I heard that to be lumpen, you have to do meth. Maybe she become lumpen, and she's just going down to the government to go pick up a meth pipe. You know, I heard this from some. No, no, you're not encouraging meth. We fight the narcotics. Don't. Say no, I'm not. That. No, I'm not. I'm not encouraging it. I'm saying what the aristocrats think because I was told that all lumpen people me? like. All lumpen people are just meth addicts and meth dealers. Yeah, like I, I, I guess that's the lumpen economy. Like there's some of the meth addicts and some of the meth dealers. She was here and I could hear her briefly, and then she disappeared. Yeah, I know because she thought that we couldn't hear her, so she just decided to leave, as if that was actually how it works. Can you guys okay. hear me? No. Yeah, I'm gonna, all right, comrade, <laughs> is going on mute. Comrade, no, is going on mute, and uh, you can express yourself. Wait. No. To, like, nah. Yeah. This is how you make me a mod. Okay, go on YouTube. Go on the YouTube chat, not from Streamyard. Uh, go on the YouTube chat. Click okay. on my profile. Okay, hold, hold on. Hold and on, it hold says on. add mod. There's a part oh, where it gosh. says. Add mod. Okay. Okay. All right. <sighs> Do 
Do you see it, Nat? Yeah, okay. So, says to say <laughs> something, create poll, emojis, hi chat. Um, no. Participations. Click on, click on uh, my uh, thing. Click on, like, one of my chats. Like, one of my comments that I put on there. On, okay, on, uh, on, on the, like, on the stream yard or on the on the YouTube? YouTube. On YouTube. Okay, so I pressing I'm pressing on you, but it's not doing anything. That that's weird pressing. That's, that's click. Weird. Click. You're what am I click. clicking? On my name. All right. Click so pin message report remove. Put you time I use your ad moderator. Ad moderator. Click the okay. ad moderator thing. All right. Now I need Stone to type something in chat. I need my co-host to type something. Okay, in the chat. yeah, okay, okay. I'll type something in the chat then, so you can add me as a mod. You need to send me the link to the video. Actually, I'll just go onto your channel. It'll be easy to do that. Don't worry about it. Yeah, actually, do you that. Can... I have it in there, bro. I have it in there. You I was also gonna say can... this. I was gonna give like what happened with Emma and you uh, as well. Yeah, yeah. So but let's let's don't hold. type in chat first, so I can make a mod, and then I'll go on mute. And I'll let you guys talk. Okay. Um, Oh, every time I type in net, it doesn't come up with you even on subscribe to. I have to type in comrade net separately. Censorship much. Yeah, I know. That's well, why I, I joined mean, this I, I, I don't like things derailed, but the problem that all three of us have is we all like to talk. You know, the other oh. thing I also did is this. I joined the decentralized platform. I joined Telegram. Stone, write in chat. Say some, Write something in chat, bro. Just say hey or something, whatever. Write, write something like down with the labor aristocrats or something like or, or third or world off with bitches the or something. Or yeah, say off, with the pigs. off with the pigs. It's too late. It's too late. It's too late. I've I've gone with the I've gone with the most radical choice. Okay. Perfect. Punis. Okay. Oh, by the way, but, that's the name. Of, that's the name of your YouTube channel. Is the crippled communist? Maybe. <laughs> Dogs much. And if Connor Gillis was here, I'd make her a moderator too, because Connor Gillis definitely works with me. But she's 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 been busy. Well, right? I believe she would be sleeping right now. So probably, because probably. Well, maybe. twelve a.m. at my time. So well, it's, well, it's four a.m. and it's fucking eighteen degrees. What I'm going to do now, comrades, Celsius. is I'm going to mute myself. I'm going to let you guys talk. And you're both mods. And when Connor Gillis goes around, we'll, we'll talk about making her a mod. But, like, I'm going to go on mute and have a cigarette while you guys talk. Uh, and you can explain to um, Dr. Weisfeld that, you know, I, I'll, let me just let me just debrief de 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 a little bit. Uh, Falcon General is a 14-year-old trans uh, woman. And she is also an indigenous Mexican. Uh, also friends with my older child, you know, my older child, Dr. Weisfeld, and my old Chider child has joined our militia, and um, our old child is, uh, will also be joining Emma and Youth when she turns 14. Now, take it away, Comrade Stone, Dan the Falcon General, and I'm going to smoke a cancer stick. Um, can I, uh, want me to start off with what happened with Emma and Youth, if you want to hear my story or Okay, no. let Stone yeah. kind of guide it, because he's my co-host, but, you know, you are. Oh, are, yeah, go into that, go into that. This is not a censorship campaign. Speak your mind. Yeah, oh, no, go into that. Go, so, get, get on into that stuff. That'll we both kind of had, like, some misconception. Like, Maxwell thought it was because, like, uh, basically he actually was a member of MRNU. He was actually somebody who tried to join MRNU. So, mm -hmm. a member of mine, uh, his name was Lucas Ryan. So, this had to do with, like, the country server community. If you don't know what it is, like... You guys can make like a, a Discord server and make it into like a, a fake country or something like that. Like, for example, a Democratic People's Republic of Yorkshire, whatever the fuck. But <laughs> so my uh, friend, uh, who's also a member of Emmer and Youth, and he's also helping me with the alliance with uh, Danky King's party. So he basically banned. Uh, this guy named Tiger Mink, aka Liam. I'm just gonna call him Liam. Liam from his server, and he says like, cause he's like a pedo. And then I asked like, why was he banned? And then he told me this that he harassed, he sexually harassed a 14 year old girl. 
Ooh. And he told me to block him, and and also I blocked him on Skype. Before that, he I linked him to my Skype profile pic, so uh, not profile pic, Skype profile, so he can DM me and actually answer the vetting questions. He said only hey, and he never even actually answered any of the vetting questions. So. Basically, if you don't answer the vetting questions, you don't become a member of Emer. You do not become a, a member of Emer and Youth. And also, if your application is not approved by me, you're not a member of Emer and Youth. Yeah. So, he would refuse to do that. So then I find out about this. So I block him immediately from Discord and from Skype. And then uh, next, we basically start going on a full-on burn notice, basically DMing mods from our servers, like Binbull server, to ban this guy. We also got the communist part, the communist library, to do it, and other Discord servers as well to ban this guy. Basically, then I also had to open an investigation and had to set back a few things due to the situation. So now I'm going to have to be talking to a literal victim about this. And actually he had two victims. The 14 year old girl is off of Discord, but there was an R1 whose name is like Comrade Helen. And uh, mm -hmm. basically he sexually harassed her. I'm not gonna go into the details cause it's just disgusting and it would wanna make you throw up. So, uh, oh, but the other- that yeah, Disgusting. and the, the other thing is this. He was also uh, somebody who wanted to fuck animals. Oh, well, that's not fucking surprised that you always end up finding this weird link between the pedophile community and the furry community. Oh, God. Yeah, he said he's a Marxist Leninist Malice furry. The oh, Gonzalo God, no. I bet he's, I bet he's into Gonzalo fucking bronies. From their server. Basically, you know the Malice Lounge or no? That's a Gonzalo um, answer. I, so, I, I don't know it, but no surprise. But yeah, they had to ban him. They were the second server to ban him. Then it was the World People's USSR, which kind of the funny way they banned him was basically giving him an execution trial. <laughs> but okay. yeah. That, that's, 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 that's a fucking, that's a meme level of laugh. It's almost, yeah, it's almost funny well, enough it, that it's acceptable. And the leader was a Ken was basically a Kenyan Maoist oh, no. whose name on Discord is uh Joseph V. Stalin. So yeah. Basically uh we basically did a whole burn notice of this guy as well. And the other thing is this, we were planning to also do a live stream and Basically, the member from Emmer and you, I'm just going to call him Comrade Lucas. Comrade Lucas, we had a call yesterday, and basically he informed me of, like, all the weird ass uh, shit. Okay, so before you go on, I know the camera com Kenyan comrade you're on about, because I was, uh, he's, he's the camera Kenyan comrade that, I, uh, that um, I like to inform people about that a lot of my positions, like, I'm not going to go into them now because we'll try not to cause any trouble. A lot of the positions that I have around China are actually come from that Kenyan comrade. He's a fucking legend. Uh, African what Stalin, some people might know him as. African YouTube Stalin. Name? Yeah, Pardon? that's African Stalin. Yeah, yeah, he was, uh, people from Finballs probably know him. Like, he's a very, very, he's a polite and timid fellow to, to the most degree, but he will absolutely slam you and uh, slam all of us. He's proved me wrong on so many stuff around the Soviet Union. He's got a great head on him. Um, and I mean, it, it goes to show you one of the things with someone, someone pointed out earlier, Africa is one of the most sort of like revolutionary parts of the world right now. And like his, his ideas and the way he looks at things is a great show of that. Like he's a fucking well venerated comrade. I got a lot of respect for him yeah. and you know, he's working class as well. Like he's not just some African, like some Kenyan comrade, like he's a, not just a true comrade. He's a working class Kenyan comrade going through the mm -hmm. brilliant businesses. It's one of the things me and him connected on a saw in his lump is that me and him were both like we, we both had about the same generation of phones. We were just having like a nice little sort of like love, like it was a really heartwarming exchange between us sort of going on about how crappy our phones were. He, he wins by far, trust me, like, cause he's in a shit <laughs> position, but like, you know, yeah. it was a nice little reflection on things. Cause you know, we were both in 
you know, he's in a worse position than me. But we're both in that sort of relatable economic position where we can relate yeah. and get things across like that. I can hear foxes fucking outside my window. Yeah, as well as basically, we were all like going around every Discord server. We went to the People's Republic of China server and we were like spamming, like adding the mods every single time basically during that day and like saying ban this guy ban this guy immediately now 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 because they were not fucking active so we basically made them like we basically told them to get the fuck back online or you'll have the image of harboring pedos <laughs> we basically did like a whole burn notice and we were like telling every server to do this even some servers waited until like the next day to ban the guy oh, which is yes. like almost the next day like 11 uh, p.m or something like that when when you when you have to when you when it takes you nearly 24 hours to figure out that maybe i don't know uh, you should maybe kick the pedophile i don't know but might be a good idea yeah it was crazy it took my friend uh lucas comrade lucas a week to find out about all this stuff because Literally, he was shocked and he feels like super bad about the situation. So basically, he was like, okay, I have to expose this guy because we must never let uh, this ever happen again. And basically, he's like a whole stain to the Marxist, to Marxism, Leninism, Maoism. Not the first that I've seen on Discord. <laughs> oh, here's the other thing. the last. It won't be the last. Yeah, that's true. It won't be the last. The Marxism time... in general is disappointing on Discord. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. No wonder why. And also, good news is that since uh, Disco Marxism on Discord is shit, uh, we have some Gonzaloist YouTubers who are retiring from <laughs> internet leftism. <laughs> hey! They should just retire in general. <laughs> true. Oh my god, I remember this, like, one guy, his name was Equinox or some shit like that, or Mouse. Oh god. I can't oh, stand no. that guy. He's, uh, fucking, um, who, who was this other geezer as well, I can't remember the name of, and he, like, he got really, really prominent in Finball server at one point before you were around, like, way, uh, it was probably, probably about a year before you started coming about, and he, 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 it might be the same geezer, I'm not too sure, but I think it was someone else. It's either like Equinox or someone else. It might have been someone else, but this cunt, like, he got really high up and he was just being a cunt, but he wasn't doing, like, actual Maoism. He was just wrecking. He was just wrecking and going hard about how everyone needs to start reading from Mao first. And it's like, okay, that does not sound like a Maoist. I've never known any Maoist that turns around and goes, you guys just need to read, read yeah, Mao. That, that makes no sense because literally, like, dog, you have to go through Marx, Engels, Lenin, Stalin, then Mao, and then other a bunch of other minor. Story might not be about it. Yeah, that might be interesting. I think that has something to say. Do you guys uh, want to hear a story? We will have to wrap up soon. Bye. All right. All right. So, have... so um, I take it that we've explained everything to Doctor Weisfeld about this because, like. This situation gets more and more complicated. I mean, and we got we, we got the stuff about the pedophile out. Like, like we would we 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 actually so funny enough, we didn't go on the tangent until the end. We behaved. Yeah, see guys, we behaved. We are good. <laughs> see guys. Uh, I'm gonna tell you a mature. story. A true story. So, do you guys remember when the Engels? Like, I don't know how the fuck he gets this information, but the Engels just seems to know everything for some reason. He just knows shit. I don't know. Oh, Nat, remember that comment I made about Love when you said that shit? Remember that comment? Which one? <laughs> the oh, angles. no, do not, no, that you don't want people to know about that, don't bring that up. <laughs> 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 like, this is, this is, this is the thing, Farrakhan is dedicated to the meme. <laughs> but well, I remember what Ingles well, said, memes are LARP. <laughs> I guess we'll uh, make an exception. I Black think, I think. It's, oh. not it's actually trolling the white. To disclose this, he's going to get in contact with Jose Maria Sincion. Got okay, him that so contact. My story. My story. Because we're going to have to go soon, comrades. My story. Are you ready? Yeah, story time. 
So if you remember, um, I'm going to flush out for you what actually happened. Uh, because, see, like, freaking b Love. He's like, oh, my gosh, you're lying about it. But first of all, nobody said that you actually doxed You said that you doxed me, and we said that whatever the fuck you're doing, the Phantom Menace is coming to fuck, fuck us up and needing to stop this. And what ended up happening? He ended up hanging out with Scandals Cantina, known for anti-Semitism and transphobia in the Phantom Menace. And... Death to me level. And he had and he's friends with the boss. <laughs> pushing the laws of the fucking pushing the limits of the law a bit there, aren't you? Um, guys, can I say this? Is this not controversial? I hope uh basically uh, I like how you before you go, I like how you have to clarify that before you say something. Like, by the way, this isn't controversial before someone cuts me up. I hope my Arizona comrades give him something in the head that starts with a B. <laughs> <laughs> what happened basically was okay. So GRS is GRS is a different is different uh, patriotic socialist group. Uh, they they are very friendly with PSFM because what 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 patriotic socialism is one form of demarchism. But the thing about the patriotic socialists is they always appreciate different units that they can argue with because they they love dialectical arguments. GRS is kind of closing, but GRS has their book out. The idea will be that the book will be out. Uh, PSFM adopted their book, but PSFM. Okay, so PSFM used to work at a boarding house that I lived at. And the unfortunately, mm -hmm. the landlady did not know that there were people who also lived in because there's this thing called the runaways, and there were people that ran in. And I was set up to watch, not to be a caretaker, but just to make sure people didn't stay off narcotics. And GRS found it difficult to organize their situation because they lived there too, because the other group in the house, the other group in the boarding house was trying to turn it into a trap house. So there was a conflict between GRS. And the narcotics guys, because there was a fundamental disagreement. So this is where what crashed GRS. But GRS did manage to survive a lot of their their people. You know what? And this, this GRS knew what happened. They notified me and Jake and Darth Snobia later. They started telling people shit. They remnants of GRS, and they hooked up with the with the VA because there are Navajos in the VA, and there is a growing sentiment that, especially because a lot of people in Arizona get this, they hate red tube. So the far left has had to clarify the difference between the rat lips and the far left. In I mean, the process of this, listen, thanks to Comrade Brokemon of PSFM and Jason and and uh, Jason's friend and my friend and all of our friend Comrade Number Three, both in PSFM, Comrade Brokemon and, and uh, Comrade Number Three, um, a, 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 a unity was was born between the Navajo Nation and um, the VA, because there is a pedophile issue going on. A lot of it's done by the rat lips. There is another issue where I mean we need to bring more and more people to the Navajo Nation too, because they've got they've got a correct line of struggle in America and Navajo do. Maybe not in line with what you the Maoists so well this won't entirely you notice, but you notice how, 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 how Maxwell pointed out that Maxwell's understanding of the other Carl came exclusively from B level. It seems that B level was talking shit to everybody the whole time. B level seems so nice, and this B level is a master manipulator. What did you expect? B level manipulated all of us. This is this is not, so this is nothing. Bullshit. This is nothing special to the Viber. It's not because they're special. It's just this is a skill of the aristocracy. They manipulate. That's why everyone gets caught on to all these demagogues. That they act like demagogues. It's a it's a it's a tendency of their class conditions. The class the, the also, so 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 also, every class every class cl consciousness has its as as an ideology it eventually builds up towards that comes from its class roots. The class consciousness of the bourgeoisie is liberalism, capitalism. Uh, that's their comfort. They don't like they, so fascism is lovely and beneficial for them when they're suffering. But that is that is them trying to either expand out when they're suffering, or it is a conglomeration of them trying to expand out and quicker and be be, be a bigger dick to another empire. Um, so they like liberalism. The labor aristocracy, their class consciousness is fascism. They want that fascist fucking. Um, they they don't they don't want it as their core system. They use it as a tool to protect their class position. They they only need class consciousness when they have to. When they really need to grow volatile, screech out, and start organizing together and fighting against the proletariat and, and well, not so much fighting against them, but fighting against their interests, using them as a tool to build fascism. The proletariat class con consciousness, that's socialism, that is the move forward. Whether it's the Marxists, the Bundists, or anyone else, we all need to work together and figure that out when we've dealt with the capitalists. But at the end of the day, the um, 
socialism is the movement forward in that segue and we need to get into how socialism is going to definitely change in the next next run forward when we have our next revolutions it's not going to be exactly the same the core foundations of it like um as, as met was already going on about with his ideas of socialism already fall into those core foundations slightly anyway but it's, you know the ownership of the means of production the all for everyone the fact that people are living the meritocratic so they're being paid by the value of the labor that they produce and that we remove tax from society because you know what from the surplus labor value of which we follow as marxists why do we need tax in society we promise to eliminate that we should eliminate that but yeah you know net you mentioned a really good thing that comes into what we were talking about earlier that ties into dual power and the really importance of dual power and how we need to support all these peoples because it's you know um what 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 your story was going on about really links up to the sort of greater perspective as to why we need to support all these struggles and why we need to build a dual power movement amongst these struggles. Patriarch Otherwise, there's more and more people will be dying for a struggle for nothing. Patriotic socialists are extremely efficient at dual power. They don't call it that though, but like that in in the Marxist definition, it would be considered dual power. So we're gonna have they, to go, uh, comrades. I'm glad that you like glad for all the people that showed up. Uh, we will uh -huh. uh, we will be around again. Does anybody have any closing statements? Um, uh can i say something uh maybe. viva Guerrero popular viva el marxismo lanismo maoismo and red salute comrades goodbye uh, what's all right. it all right so, so the rules are what like well, does the soviet have anything last to say because you're both going to reply to a wonderful statement i must make as tradition here dictates well i mean the point that we got to keep contention and is that we live in the, in the most comfortable world, regardless of how turmoil it can be, and we need to keep our eye open because the people that do live in luxury, that do have comfort, that do live in this foundation of the labor aristocracy, they are burying their heads in the sand with the imperialists at any turn that they can to keep trying to push for the, their defense and their class positions, and we need to keep ready for any of these suits, as I like to call them, these dickheads, they're fucking looking up for their class positions, and we need to stand with the lump and with the proletariat as these two comrades have put in their positions forward in their movements and what they've said in their content and what I've said virulently from my mouth from anyone who's ever talking to me. We need to come together with them and need to stand with them and need to build that base because that's where we're going to find our smartest comrades, not in the aristocracy, in the poor. And as far as that goes, Red Salute. All right, so Red Salute comrades, and now I'm going to say it and then you guys are going to say it. You're going to say the reply and you should know it by now. Commies. Jews. Commies. You're supposed to say Jews because the communists say the, say Jews. All right, let's try it again. Uh, Commies. Jews. Fuck, I don't know the other part. Jews. If I say commies, the commies have to say Jews. So let's try it again. Commies. Jews. Jews. Let me say Jew three times. Well, I'm going to get stabbed now. No, is no, that, you know what? So it's not like Bloody Mary, because it is past... It, where, you know well, you're well, you sure it's not like Bloody Mary, though, because it is past, like, 3 o'clock. Because you say Bloody Mary three times in the mirror, past, like, it is past, like, 3 o'clock or something, you get stabbed in the, in the back. Fascists and Radlibs beware. Long live the Jewish communist conspiracy.